from fantastic Uptown Burbank. Harmontown is now in session. Let's put your groovy chicken hands together for the game master extraordinaire, Mr. Spencer Crittenden. Hell yeah! Spencer's gonna do a little freestyle for us to start the show off. Hey guys, it's me, Spencer MC. Gonna rap really slow. If I do that, I might keep the flow. That's all I got, I think. I think I really am bad at rapping. Put your hands together out there in podcast land for the mayor of Harmon Town, Mr. Dan Harmon! Oh, yeah. Thank you. The gauntlet has been dropped. Did you hear that freestyle? Yeah, I I, I couldn't hear all of it. I felt like... It was good. I felt like it was good enough to get there, us. There going. might have to be a slow rap battle right now. Yeah, yeah I think we're we got it. Spencer warmed us up. It's good. Cut that shit. Oh, you scared? You running <laughs> scared? <laughs> yeah, the refusal of a call, man. <laughs> you 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 running from my slow fire? I got. <laughs> I got no problem admitting that. I'm a, I'm a, we've heard my rapping the last six months. I mean, not that it was better before that, but it's gotten now it's gotten bad and sterile. I like it. Now I was I I have I've like a it, it used to be interesting that I was a surgeon that worked with a rusty spoon and then and then I washed and cleaned the spoon and replaced it with one from Target. Uh, creatively speaking, it's still good. Don't mean to offend any Target employees out there. Fight for fifteen. Minimum wage, socialism, let's all share money until we die. Just not mine. Um, hope you're in the mood for a bad show tonight. Um, what are you going to do, take your business elsewhere? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go give $5 a month to... How could it be bad? We got so many good things. No, we got great things, but I just... I, 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 should, I, I said bad to be... Uh, facetious and self kind of deprecating i was i was gonna what i really meant in my head was kind of a sleepy show a low energy show okay i'm not real i'm not feeling i'm not excited remember when i was all excited about killer bees and going into the lake oh but, would that we could go back to then by the way some by the way some guy tweeted and he you know multiple tweet story about how a friend of his, he's named after his best friend's dad who died in a bee attack. They found him drowned with bees in his throat. Um, mm. He didn't say this directly, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and assume that he was trying to in-your-face us, like a bee. Uh, like, like, he was trying to save your life. No, he was trying to say, I got you. I'm the guy you're looking for. I'm the guy with the story about a bee attack where someone died because they jumped in water. Doesn't work. And, and like I told the guy on Twitter... Look, you brought your friend's dad's ghost into the courtroom, so I'm not being insensitive to his life. I want your friend and his dad to be respected. But since since he's Exhibit A, I have to be clinical about it and say, this doesn't prove anything. I, I, I know that if killer bees are chasing you and you jump into water, they may be uh, able to wait for you, monitor your carbon dioxide bubbles, and when you stick your head above water, fly into your nose and mouth, sting you, and and effectively kill you, like Jason Voorhees in the uh, deleted scene of the Derek uh, uh, Mears version, where Jason Voorhees just stands outside Crystal Lake so that the woman who's trying to get her away from him by swimming, just she just slowly drowns. He keeps walking around. Yeah, yeah. she just keeps swimming to each side of Crystal Lake. And then Jason just <laughs> walks around the lake and watches her drown. He's like a one-man beehive. <laughs> did they did, did they edit that out of the movie? I, did, I, I, I remember seeing that where he where he where he. I remember Derek Derek describing that to me, and I was like, "This confirms that this Friday the Thirteenth reboot will be not yeah. the final chapter." Because it sounds awesome, someone someone thought of that. I like that. I like I like it when uh, brutality isn't just uh, torture porn. When it's more like, I guess it kind of is torture porn. Like, let's think of a new way to kill a lady. All right. Well, I guess that franchise deserved to die. Okay. This did was you, my, uh, was my friend could have gotten more work. Did He's, you watch any of those Winter Olympics, Dan? Yeah. 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 
What? <sighs> Which ones? I like the figure skating. Yeah. Why? The spinning? The triumph of the human will. The yeah, yeah, the... Sports Corner! Winner of the next edition, 2018, Beyond Chain. Dan's going to get up Sports Corner in that thing. Hey, Olympics. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I uh, figure skating. Look, I'm not going to – I I know it's 2018 and Dan Harmon hasn't had a year where anyone's going to him for opinions about what's uh, sexually uh, uh, titillating. Um, I'm not a popular source of that information. It's no longer charming for me to talk about the things that uh, um, uh, make me excited. Um, You're allowed to like what you like without crossing a line. No, it's just not charismatic. Uh, not, I, I know I'm allowed to do all kinds of stuff. Just saying, I know, I know, I know that's not really what's for sale uh, w- with me. But I, but I, but you brought it up. Look, I figure skate, f- female figure skating uh, uh, outfits are how I wish everyone dressed in <laughs> normal life. I, 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 Whoa, I, even you? Sure, I'll I'll do anything. <laughs> yeah, I. I uh, it's just it's very 80s it's very like I love the gauzy little skirts and the just the, and the, and obviously you know but it's interesting because you like I look at the outfits and the outfits are titillating but it truly is it it, 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 it clearly is also the motion the grace you know the the things that are difficult that somehow are also that's it, it makes the person beautiful so you keep going back and forth like I will since you guys are subscribers and no one else is going to hear this, I will tell you I did try to masturbate to figure skating this year. <laughs> Just to see if I could. You, you, you tried unsuccessfully? or Well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't like stay on it. I, 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 went, I ended up going to Pornhub Premium and typing figure skating. Right. <laughs> Just because pr- pr- I was like, well, wait a minute. What if... I, said, I was trying to masturbate to a women's biathlon where they ski and shoot, but the, they, the NBC keeps going to commercial. Oh, yeah. As long as we're objectifying uh, Olympiads, uh, like I, 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 the, 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 it's interesting the uh, the curling. Everybody's crazy about the Korean curlers and the, I mean the guys. The, 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 the U.S. men's team won, won the whole the, kit and caboodle. Uh, but there's also like the Swedish curlers. I mean, look, I, I now now I'm in territory where maybe C- Cody could get upset. Like I think she can't get upset me talking about outfits on figure skaters. So I don't want to, I don't want to go into the Swedish curling team. We're talking about the men's or women's? Let's say the men. Okay. Get me out of this doghouse. All right. Let's move on. Now, while we're talking about curling outfits, I was very excited. I was in Canada when the uh, the, the, the gold medal bout was happening between the U.S. and was it the Swiss, I believe? Um, I, think it's, I think it was the Swiss. It team. was the Swiss. And I was so happy that the men won because they'd never won, and Canada has never lost. It was the first Olympics where Canada didn't get a medal in curling or hockey. Uh, for, uh, for the men and I was very excited and then I was talking to church and we, two of the guys had red ball caps on one guy's was the bill was rounded like, like a ball player the other guy's was kind of flat like kind of a MAGA like Trumpy hat mm-hmm. and, I, and I, it kind of put a little bit of like I, I, I spent I think the hours between 1 and 2 a.m. in Vancouver Googling and, and searching through Twitter to see if the men's curling team were Trumpies. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to ask the curling questions that everybody asks. <laughs> why, why is it a sport? Like, why, since it is a sport, why hasn't anyone gotten so good at putting the puck where it belongs that you actually need sweepy people to guide it to its spot? Like, why wouldn't it be the it best strategy of all? You put a little spin on it. And and the stone starts to curl, but the sweeping either uh, can speed it up and actually give it a little kind of furrow to go into. And you can you can give it like left or right angle. You you could say all of these things about a dart in the air. Like there's it's not part of darts that a helicopter comes down and like lassos the dart or someone blows on it. It's not part of shuffleboard that someone like oils the path in front of the shuffleboard puck. Why is why is curling Dan, you're not talking just like a person that doesn't know what a freeze or a draw or a draw weight? Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna. I, I'd be a total hypocrite to suggest that something's more Olympic than something else. I I don't care. I, I if the kids are having a good time, I'm happy for them. Curling, it's really about the yardage. But I am I am kind I just I, I just am I I, I, I am kind of surprised. It's exact. It's about the yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's to the very figure yard. skating too. Do you All think, about the yardage. Do you think that figure skating will ever be? And I almost like I'm such a pervert that uh, about my figure skating that I uh, I almost feel like I'm like 
I'm causing trouble for myself by bringing it up, but you can't help but sit there in these changing times and watch figure skating and go, this just seems like a bit of a throwback at this point. A throwback for which I am eternally grateful. Uh, but but I like like isn't it kind of actually remarkable that we, that that uh, no one's come in and gone put some pants on these women for God's sakes? We see the guys can skate in pants. What are we? Why yeah. do we keep dressing them like Playboy bunnies? Well, I don't think any any sport that's like inspired a hit is up for a revision. Yeah, it's worth a lot of money, and also like you don't. It's a, but it's probably also a, it's it'll be slow to change because of the amount of discipline. Like no one's changed how ballet dancers uh, uh, carry themselves. Like they're it's such an it's such a difficult honor to become a a, a ballet dancer in you know of repute right. that that no no one along the way is like going to allow themselves to be distracted by questions about whether they should be doing this thing that they've been doing since they've been three years old. It is crazy. I mean, I've heard that there's like something called the quad jump that's changing up the figure skating game. Yeah, the, uh, forget her name, uh, U.S. figure skater landed the first quad in women's, like she's yeah. the only women's figure skater that's landed the quad. Something like that. I will say, this is the year that I finally, I think it's part of it, it's like getting middle age, like maybe my hormones have, have tapered enough that I really am just noticing how beautiful, how graceful, you know, I'm like appreciative of the actual discipline and like probably also just like, well, these Olympics only happen in what, every decade? What is it? Four like, years. Something like that. Well, two years per summer, winter, but four years per yeah, event you four, see again. Four-year Olympia. Okay. So, well, was four years ago, I was I was a real douche. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the, but and, and, and I was probably still just like, that's hot. You, you hadn't even thought about how, how to apologize. Are. But now I'm kind of, well, I still am, but now I'm like, that's hot plus poetry. Because of grace? Yeah. Right. Yeah, but that is the sport. Like that. That gracefulness. Like I mean, you're, you know, the, like you said, it's like ballet. But like that is, you know, that's that's I think what the judges are looking for and stuff. So that is, yeah, that's what they are mastering. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Do you think we need to see their their legs in uh, sheer? Uh, um, uh, I think they want to. Right. That's probably in part order to, of what in order to be able to see that they're like pulling off the like twirls. They want to do it. Like yeah, I generally. think yeah, the, the angles, the lines. Yeah, I think that's 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 all part of it. I think, but also I think there's a heritage to that where it's all about this kind of. There's a heritage. There's a lot of things that were uh, bad under news. the microscope this year. Slavery. Uh, <laughs> to a lot name of a few. Um, I hate the Olympics. Yeah, the, uh, the, the five thousand uh, yard witch hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Salem Olympics. The, the, uh, yeah. But I will say, what, just one the more thing about dunking. it. I, I think, thank you to all the figure skaters out there that are working diligently and, and spend their lives disciplining, but especially just the ones that don't opt for the, for the flesh-colored, over-the-skate, uh, tight pants thing that turns your leg into an ice skate. I like the speed skaters because they get out there with giant ass knives in their feet and they're right they're riding right close to each other. When they wipe out, it's just knives flying around and they just go sailing into a like a, into a padded wall, and it's like it's it's pretty exciting. I'm stuff. shocked that these people can get yeah, they got knives in their feet, all of them. God bless them. I mean that's that's I've been on ice skates like it's fucking I've, see, I've never, as hard I, I as it looks. I can't even roller skate without like breaking my ass. I'm, roller skating is ten times easier than ice skating. That's yeah, how imagine. crazy ice skating is. It's like you just get out there and you just. I, I I I still just like I'll just stand on my uh, ankles like I just I'll just wait until we figure out it's not a good idea to be doing this. <laughs> uh, all right, well that's enough of that. Okay. Uh, let's uh, Dan. Let's, yeah, you, let's hit a rap beat. You 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 visibly lost weight since I've last seen you. Really? He's th- dropped a he's dropped a belt size. For real. No, for real. I had to punch it. You had to punch it? Well, I don't know that I had to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you, 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 wait, you're such a good assistant that you had to punch a new hole in his belt? Yeah. yeah. Do, I you mean, have, like, do you have a leather awl on you at all times? No, I borrowed a knife. <laughs> I started working out every other morning in January of 2018, and I, uh, then I, I basically have now been doing it every morning. Two every months. Other, every other morning, I add weights with uh, Dave Klein from Harmontown. I like that he's kind of just this awesome bearded guru in the foreground, and you're in front of a green screen, and I haven't figured yeah. out. People I, keep t- people pe- on the feed, they go, I like, take off, tell Dave Klein to take his shirt off, and he's like, nope, it's not about me, brother. It's about Dan. And I'm like, but also, come on. 
I, he's a personal trainer. If, he, if Dave, I mean, what do you think he's rocking under that shirt? It, it can't be a washboard, right? If he if he if he takes his shirt off, it's over for him. Yeah, it can't be a washboard. Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm just gonna say it, just to put it out there that I think that he's. I, I issue. I I right here as comptroller of Harmontown, uh, United States of America, planet Earth. Uh, issue a challenge, Dave Klein. Take that shirt off. Take it off. We should have him on here. He can take his shirt off on here. I mean, that's a, that. I like, don't know. All right. Well, let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's 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 continue our fitness uh, uh, theme of the evening by bringing up uh, my uh, brother in uh, body type, um, and uh, and also in genius. I'd argue, really, like, we can we can talk about this. I think I think we're both equally genius. Let's bring up uh, Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman. Oh shit. Robert Kirkman, everybody. You, you pick a stool, you pick a, a mic. closer one, yeah. You do whatever you want here, RK. Well, then I'm going home. Oh, well, that's, I mean, it, it's not Kirkman, like we could stop everybody. you. We'd be sorry to see you go, but it's within your right. The world is your red carpet. That would be awesome. That would be amazing. Are you Yikes. sick Are you sick of being, uh, 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 having guys like me uh, just talk about you like a hunk of money? Like, like, no, like, of course that's, not. Like, that's okay, right? It's like, fantastic. I know you're a human being. I just, I'm proud to, to know uh, a, a guy from the fucking 90s black and white comic book world that, <laughs> that, that turned it into like <laughs> something. Yeah. I mean, Kevin Eastman. Yeah, fuck Kevin Eastman. Uh, <laughs> What's he done with his life? <laughs> you don't even hear about the turtles anymore. It's not like they're like on television every week or something. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's crazy. But uh, uh, but no no I mean it's uh, you know it's a little weird it's not something I think about twenty four seven so when people say it I'm kind of like oh yeah but if you're not the only one it happens a lot T- tell just tell us something like in the last well I don't know something that sticks out in your head as a moment when you're like Jesus Christ that's really rich about yourself that you were like someone came up to you. Uh, and said, can I have a car? And you were like, yeah. And then as they drove away, you're like, whoa, that's not me. Uh, <laughs> Can't believe I gave that guy a car. I've never given anyone a car. Well, I mean, I've given family members cars. I'm trying to uh, think of an <laughs> example like, so, I, so I can pave like the way for you. Person. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Yeah. I did this. Robert, have you, have you ever given anybody a free iPad and not lorded it over them? Yeah. You have me too. That's yeah. actually very interesting to no. hear. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That's a like a. That's a yeah. real shitty thing to do. Is that like? Uh, yeah. Is that something you did, Dan? Yeah, no, I Dan get... didn't actually give anyone an iPad. He just let them borrow it. Yeah. Oh, okay. But he did. He did make them feel bad about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard this on the previous episode. I uh, I buy every Apple TV movie. No, I don't rent it. I, I do just that. buy it. <laughs> Because I want to watch them on my other my other devices. But that's is that a, not normal? That's a rich that's a rich guy thing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Every Apple TV movie, or just the ones you like? There's a couple that I'll just rent if it's like a found footage Canadian horror movie. Uh, like, okay, I'll rent this. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe it's psychotic. I'll go ahead and admit that. But uh, I will often, you know, buy movies on iTunes. Uh, but at the same time, if I catch my wife buying. Something on iTunes, like a Real Housewives of uh, wherever, uh, and I know it's available on another app that we uh, subscribe to for free. I'll be like, "Hey, come on, why, why are you doing that? We, what are you wasting that three dollars for?" Yeah, I won't like yell at her or anything, but it's, I it's will a, annoy her to a point where yeah. she gets mad at me. You're not being miserly. That's uh, that's a that's a redditor thing. That's your aspy brain. Like it's a logic addiction. You're like, like you, you can't check Hulu. You can't yeah. check Hulu before you buy this thing on. Don't fall for the apple trap. Yeah. Our demographic has the highest ratio of, uh, wait, I don't know how to phrase it. It's the the highest ratio of disposable income to total <laughs> unacceptance of, like, throwing money away. Like, like it's, it's like, like I've never seen people that are probably pretty rich uh, talk so meticulously about what they're getting for $3 here or $2 there. Like, it's not, it's not even cheapness. It is, it's like... Because they'll give fifty dollars to the Red Cross if they see a hurricane. Like sure. they're good people. They they they're not miserly, but if they're addicted to uh, logic, they don't want to be a sucker. Exactly. 
Yeah. And I did the math one time. I was, you know, I was like, well, if she bought one or two a week for an entire year, we're looking at like $100. All right. Quit making your wife mad at you. But, and, uh, yeah, I still I still do it sometimes. Anytime I do the math, I'm like, man, none of this matters. Anytime I do the math, it's like this doesn't add up to I shouldn't have even done the math. Let me ask some math Walking helps. Dead questions yeah. that I've been afraid to ask. Oh, please. Uh, uh, what, like, what happens after they leave the prison? <laughs> I've been afraid to ask that because it makes me well, sound like a bad friend. The answer to almost every question <laughs> that you could ask like that. So they find another. Well, like some of them die. <laughs> Some of them uh, die and then they find it. I see there's a guy with a bat that has barbed wire on the bat now. That He looks like he's going to be a problem. You don't watch the show? I haven't watched it since oh they left God. the prison. It's not because I don't. No, I, I, th- that, in fact, was the high point. You can ask. You know, we don't need you. I don't. I know you don't. And I, I But ask ask Gimple, <laughs> Scott Gimple. I, 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 I went to dinner with him and uh, I was like, holy. It was right after the prison. Uh, Do you know what happened when they left the prison? Uh, That's when Scott Gimple took over as showrunner. So <laughs> your buddy, you haven't watched any of his episodes at all yeah i would say but yeah i guess maybe he accepted the praise and he shouldn't have but yeah, uh no, I, I was like man you guys are nailing it uh uh yeah and i and then i and then i just i don't know maybe i look i haven't watched it well, let me yet. do a run through so they leave the prison and then they go to this place called terminus and then i'm not going to recap all these seasons <laughs> I, I, i'm just kidding now, robert no, I, no offense i i don't watch a lot of tv shows i've never seen one second of walking dead even though, how many seasons has this been on for now uh we uh, we're just starting uh, the back half of season 8 jesus christ but so, also yeah. that's yeah, it's, a, it's almost more walking dead than anyone can handle that's a strong <laughs> 8 because there's also like three shows coming off of it there's a there's a cooking there's dead fear the walking dead there's a there's a there's a cooking dead uh the, uh, uh, uh junior yep uh yeah. for walking the dead just the kids. Kids. Kids who yeah. make food who are zombies. Um, the, uh, Chris Hardwick like like sits in a bathtub and talks about Walking mm-hmm. Dead in two different shows. Yeah. Uh, and then there's an actual other Walking Dead show, yeah, Fear of the Walking Dead. There's a dead. scripting dead where they just show pages from the script <laughs> oh, and they just amazing. slowly <laughs> turn. That could be huge. How 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 has how has Fear of the Walking Dead? Uh, there's no of. Right. Oh, it's fear, just fear fear of the Walking oh, Dead. Okay, that would be a, yeah, Dan. Yeah. Even I know that. Fear of the Walking Dead, be, it, that does sound automatically like a worse show because it's like it could just be people in a room uh, scared, I ain't going scared outside. to check. But. I'm not going outside. <laughs> like an I hear there's zombies out there. <laughs> there might I have be. fear of the Walking Dead. <laughs> I'm staying indoors. <laughs> How 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 has that been uh, critically, creatively, financially? Uh, run through the metrics. Check check and check. I don't know. <laughs> it's all been fine. It's still on. Everybody's <laughs> happy with it. Yeah yeah. We just started our, our uh, well. We're working on a fourth season. It'll start right after season eight. We got uh, Andrew Chambliss and uh, Ian Goldberg taking over as showrunners this season. Uh, we got this uh, character Morgan from uh, Walking Dead that's going to be jumping over to Fear oh. the Walking Dead. So there's some crazy a little stuff jump going on. over. Yeah yeah. yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a cool new season. I hope, I hope Morgan doesn't judge them for being such scaredy cats. I think he will. Yeah, he's kind <laughs> he's of a jerk. Like, that Morgan, he's gonna know, be like, guys, come outside. It's fine. I've been up to my ears in these things, and you're, you you yeah. have a show about being scared of them. <laughs> what is this? It's like it's like when uh, it's like when uh, Jerry Orbach went over to uh, 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 the uh, trial by jury, Law and Order. It's like a kind of retirement. It's a golden parachute for this Morgan character. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, much. He's gonna go chill out and, and be scared of The Walking Dead. Yeah, we gotta we gotta establish that we're moving him from Walking Dead show to Walking Dead show, so that when we put up a new show, it's like okay, and now Morgan's going to this one too. How many Walking Deads are there? Like, how, I mean, how many zombies? Like, how many of, of the Walking Dead? Like, like population wise. Well, well, I don't. I don't. I don't keep those numbers. I mean, just like <laughs> ballpark it for me. I don't know, like a billion. A billion? <laughs> Who knows? I, so like, like he's gonna get in a lot of trouble just for riffing that number. <laughs> it's sure, gonna yeah. be like a ninety. I'm gonna page. get somebody's like, wait a minute, hold on, a billion? It can't be a billion. Oh, yeah. You've clearly not shown this much. It's not gonna. No, the region gonna, wouldn't have what's that. It's gonna be worse. Any new season that comes out, they're gonna be like, based on the billion zombies that we know are on this planet. <laughs> right. This can't possibly be the amount of zombies that are in this Walmart or like whatever. Kirkman's They're going to be billion so zombie benchmark of 2018 on yeah. Harmontown. Well, someone did the math. Uh, I can't remember exactly how it broke down, but uh, it was like if 10 percent of the population remained human and they each killed like five zombies a week, hmm. and every other living person was turned into a zombie, 
they would kill all the zombies in like eleven months. It's like some kind of <laughs> some kind of crazy. Uh, are the uh, are Walking that, Dead fans? Uh, uh, this is this is such a dumb question, but maybe it'll start a conversation. I, 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 let's hope because it seems like it, it's got. Uh, I, I was like, are Walking Dead fans compared to other fandoms you've seen? Are they are they more or less? obsessed with stuff like that or are they more like chill like it's not about the science or are they just the well, it's same all different shades i mean there are you know i get i get those essays of, right you know you clearly meant this was going to happen that's why it was a dumb this question, character said like, this and yeah. yeah but i mean there's you know there's 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 chill fans and there's uh uh really crazy fans which i think are awesome i mean anytime i get a uh goddamn like 30 page book report on like a, a <laughs> two minute scene i'm like man it's the best thing I've ever seen. I've, I, and yeah. I'll, I'll read them. I'll read the whole thing. I'm like, this is insane. I won't read them, but I'm like, cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> like, sounds like I still got it. I'm still immersing them. I still, it's, 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 like, uh, it's like if you ran a casino uh, uh, when you, you, you see somebody on the sidewalk crying. You're like, fuck, I still got it. So, Dan, you didn't read my 20-page essay on community? Uh, no, no. I, I mean, I, th- I was offended by the title. I thought it was, uh, you know, I we, we all we all missed Donald. You don't have to uh, fucking dig into the show when it's at its weak point. Um, the uh, but uh, are you okay? Shifting gears ever so slightly though. You got you just also finished. You were just telling me right before we came on. Fifteen years of Invincible. Yes, your other comic book. Yeah, yeah. The last issue came out uh, last week, I think. So, yeah. Did uh, did did he become Vincible? Yeah, he died. No, no, he, he, <laughs> they, they lived happily ever after. It was pretty lame. But because uh, uh, if he only lived for fifteen years, that's not even invincible. That's like <laughs> I can do that. I did it three times already. Fair point. Fair point. Is no, it, he did. Not, he did not die at the end of the book. Spoiler alert. Is it easy or hard to end a end a fifteen year long comic book series? Uh, it was pretty. I don't know. It, it, it was difficult in that. Uh, I mean, when I was writing the last issue, I kept coming up with more ideas for the next issue. And oh, I was like, yeah. Stop, like, Brain. Nope. This is not what we're doing. Right, like, right. What, are, what are you doing? Uh, and then it just made me sad because, you know, I've been living with these characters for. You said you were writing a script years. every month for 15 years, including yeah, on, the nine yeah. years that you didn't have to do it anymore <laughs> or anything. You could have run in the street naked and said, I'm Robert Kirkman, arrest me, and no oh, one would mean, be allowed to. You mean because of the money? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I try to ignore that kind of stuff. Also, you know, if you sit down to do the math, it's like, all right, I'm going to be broke Uh-oh. by like <laughs> 62. I'm hoping to yeah. live longer than 62. No, come on, you have you have Drew Carey money by now, as in like you have so much money, true or false, that I could host Prices Right. Like, that what are, that what are, if you put is it, it all his money that he's giving away, is that what you're saying? Well, I think Drew's being smart and going like he's gonna. He didn't want to. He didn't want to become. Here, I don't, I'm so I don't rich, think he was like running. I'm so out rich. Of, sometimes I watch the Prices Right, and I'm like, really? That's all. <laughs> you guys are excited over that? Yeah, exactly. That's ba- one bag of that rice <laughs> Um Who cares what it costs? Stick it up your ass, stupid housewife. Um, the uh, two twenty five. The the. Uh, why did he say that? It's the price of rice aroni. Oh, oh, oh! I thought you said it's eight twenty-five. I was like, Jesus, when did you become a fucking runtime Nazi? <laughs> wow! I thought you were like, I thought you were like, come on, keep the show I moving. Was just, I'm like, I, you, I, you know, we I, don't I, do I, anything. I ever, was making right? my bid on rice aroni. Okay, well, I'm projecting. Yeah, I'm ashamed yeah. of the show. I don't think it's a very. Can we good get show. back to me? Yes. Um, thank you. Thank the, you. Uh, the but but fi- fifteen years uh, every month. Like 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 I and we can segue into bringing up an old friend of ours, uh, for better or for worse. Like I mean, I I watched Schraub, uh work that circuit. Like, I mean, that's it's pretty remarkable that you kept doing it. And truly, yeah, you didn't have to anymore. I mean. It's well, weird. I, mean, I don't want to get sentimental or anything, but it is the thing I love to do. I mean, it's the thing I wanted to do when I grew up, and and I and I, you know, was fortunate enough to do it. Uh, I don't care about television, right? You know? Well, I was, I, I, you know, know, I was just about I, I to like, ask I that. like that Walking Dead is a show. I enjoy working in it. It's a it's a fun thing. Money's great, uh, but you know, my true passion is comic books, and right. so to 
I mean, being able to do a story for 15 years was all I ever wanted as a kid. You know, you read Peter David's Incredible Hulk run or Walt Simonson's run on Thor or any of these other books that most people who, who are listening to this probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's something that, uh, you know, I always grew up going, oh, my God, wouldn't it be nice to be able to do that? And so, you know, to get to a point where I could do it and to stop, you know, my inner child would have been angry. Yeah, I guess I don't have that. I'm like, what's uh, like, ha, ha, like, like, no, what? no passion. I mean, I like, I always liked <laughs> writing, but it, like, it's because it made me feel safe from a planet of fucking drooling idiots that were otherwise <laughs> kill me, tie me, like, 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 like I, I was like, oh god, they seem to enjoy when I do this. Like, the bloodlust in their eyes like simmers down for a second. I might make it to retirement. But now I'm like, how do I get out? Let me out. <laughs> Anyways, let's bring up Rob Schraub. Rob Schraub! Oh, yeah. When it's time for Schraubin'. He's coming. You need Rob Schraub. Here he He's comes. Rob Schraub! He's Rob Schraub! He's coming in his own by Hello. Hello. Thank you for letting me in, Robert. Wasn't my choice. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Mm. My two comic book buddies. Yes. My two artist friends. If a bomb blew up here tonight, two of the most (laughs) successful comic book artists, (laughs) just Uh, the the two most successful comic book artists (laughs) would, uh, would be gone off the face of the earth. Um... If Both a of bomb, you guys. If a bomb blew up in the middle of this building right now, two of the most successful comic book artists ever in comic books would be no more off the face of the earth. You were saying, Dan. This bomb's starting to sound more and more appealing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You have no idea. Uh, I learned how to draw women. God damn Whoa. it. Whoa. Here we go. Their chins are thinner. Yeah. Uh That's fair. No, I've been I've been uh I've been doing uh, like YouTube. Red, Red, uh, Dan Reddit's going to fucking eat that up tomorrow, man. I've been I've been doing well, your chin doesn't have to be thin if you you don't have you also don't have to be a woman. Look, I'm woke. Uh You don't even have to have a chin. Yeah. Whoa, don't have yeah. one. I'll I'll, I'll t- mail your chin to me and I'll call you a hero on on Tumblr. <laughs> Uh, I'm not fucking. I'm I'm fucking beyond woke. I'm so woke, like I'm on Adderall. Um, the uh, actually, I think I forgot to take it. That's why. That's why the show sucks. Um, it doesn't. It, it doesn't suck. It, no, it, it sucks. It, it's totally fine. I, I've 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 done terrible things before. The uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I've been learning to draw via YouTube tutorials. I kind of like. I never. Now that is where I go. Why? Well, because 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 it's like it's a it's a it's a genuine like it's a hobby like it's just a no requirement. Uh, see, I'll have passion for writing a comic book for fifteen years, but I think having a hobby is a waste of time. Mm. Mm. Well, that's because well, that sounds like you you you. I I'm envious of you because you you you, you for you obviously for both in terms of your longevity and the quality of your output and your continued and the and the gl- healthy glow in your eyes. Um, like it's all and, and your lustrous coat. Thank um, you. You, you, you uh, clearly are a person who my therapist would would say to me. See, Dan, he doesn't turn what he loves into a nightmare so that he can be more comfortable doing it. Like he doesn't have a fucked up relationship with what he loves. That's all. Like that's that's all you got going on. So you don't need a hobby. Good for you. Right. Whoop de do. Fuck off. Well, now you make me now. Now I feel terrible. <laughs> what the hell, Robert. You don't have a you don't have a hobby like a little side thing you do like model airplanes or you like to do like a your no. like a pet groomer or you, no. nothing. You 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 just draw and write. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've got the two kids, so uh, that takes that, up all the that, non-working a, time. So. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So you're, yeah, Spending you're, time with my kids is that a hobby? Does that count? No, that's no, that, kind that, of that, a hobby. That, that makes drawing and writing a hobby, probably. But but for you, a lucrative one that, that lets you have. Yeah, kids. it is definitely the old cliche of, uh, man, I can't wait till this vacation's over so I can get back to work. Yeah. Yeah. God. Fuck you. <laughs> No, that is good. I mean, and 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 and, and every, everybody that I say like I want to retire, you know, they go like, "You're never going to retire." Is this going to end in a fist fight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the world's slowest, saddest. 
and the least necessary fist fight, which is both like... <laughs> No one got hurt. It just they descends. fought for a long time, and no one got hurt. It descends into a shoulder rub. That's not even that good. I was, I was, I was in a Laguna Beach uh, bar fight, and that's exactly what it was. It was, I, I, Cody was so impressed. He's like, I can't believe you got up and intervened. I'm like, no one. It was that's like jury duty. There's a there was a, an old guy, and then like this like middle aged guy, like. I couldn't tell which one voted for Trump. I, I had no idea. Obviously, someone did, or this wouldn't be happening. They were like yelling. They started yelling at each other, and then, uh, and then, and then at one point, they both stood up, and they're like, "Me and the other two dudes in the bar, both like, like rolling our eyes, like got up off the bar stools, like really slowly, and shuffled over there to break up two guys who were never actually gonna fight because they're both so old. It was a Laguna Beach bar fight." <clears throat> and the funny thing is, like, Cody was like, she's like, wait, I can't tell which one was the good guy, which one was the bad guy. So she was trying to, like, eavesdrop on the loudmouth guy to see, was he a loudmouth liberal that pissed off the old coot conservative? Or is that an old hippie that, who, 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 whose side we're on? And is he, like, some kind of, like, flashy, like, loud, drunk, like, uh, right wing guy who's feeling his oats? We couldn't. And, the, and, and, and she kept. She kept trying to be able to tell from the things she was overhearing him say what, which one he was. And it was kind of like it's Pat sketch because y you can say things like, well, now you sound like a libertarian and we still don't know what you are. <laughs> You're just equally outraged. Anyways, I thought it, 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 it's, it was funny at the time, but it's, it's really not the best use of your time. To what else happened? That. Let me Where, ask you another. Where'd you go next? Oh, uh, there's another Walking Dead question. <laughs> when it first came on uh, FX, I, when they were advertising it. I'm like, AMC, I, I'm ahead. so excited. MC. <laughs> so, <it's> okay. <laughs> uh, really, hey, I want. I've, I I've seen him watch it. Like he has watched American it. movie classics. That doesn't make any <laughs> sense. I, I agree. I've seen him read the comic. They don't make television shows. What other television show have they? I know. Okay, the uh, you ever seen the classic movie, The Walking Dead TV show? When I saw the <laughs> the um, when I saw the ads coming, I think like an idiot, I was like, "Oh, I'm so excited! I'm gonna catch up on the, I'm gonna reread the, the trade paperbacks that I have," uh -huh. which it was a dumb move because the first. Like season was a pretty faithful, like rigorously faithful adaptation to the point where I was like, "So you're reading the comics? You were bored." I was like, I was like, I was like, well, no, I was like, well, I was reading the comics in advance of watching the oh, show. Oh, I see. Yeah. Like, because I was like, watching the TV show, I was like, well, I already know that guy's racist. I read that. That's all. <laughs> then I got excited when it started deviating. I was like, oh, they're gonna deviate. Was there a big yeah. conversation about that? And what side were you on? And how did that go? No, I mean it's. I mean it's. It's a weird. It's a whole. It's a weird process because I'm in the writers' room uh, a lot more on the earlier seasons, and uh, uh, you know they're talking about like, well, we can't do this because that that didn't really work. Oh, oh, sorry, Robert. I mean, you know, it worked fine, but you know, the, ah. you know, so it's like a little <laughs> awkward sometimes. Um, but uh, uh, but I mean, I really enjoyed it, and and it's uh, it's very humbling to be in a room of writers that are picking apart. You know the thing that you wrote and and trying to turn it into a, a TV show. I think the only way I was able to keep my sanity is because, uh, you know, I started Walking Dead when I was 23, and then you know I'm like 28 or so when the show started, and so it was stuff that was like five years of my rear view, and so I could be like, yeah, look, that didn't work. I wasn't. I you were you were at, yeah, doing. that that probably kept you from punching them in the face. <laughs> totally. It was just the, the self loathing. Sure, but, right, sure. Yeah, but uh, uh, but then and I was always the one that would push to change things because. Uh, I don't know if I'm an asshole or or what, but I I I mean I I love being surprised, and it's one of the things I I enjoy most out of my entertainment. Like when I don't see something coming, it's that's when I'm like, oh, mm, God, that's the I best wish, stuff. I, I, I wish I had paid an actor to be dressed as a zombie and like come lumbering out here right now behind you <laughs> just, just to scare me. Yeah, I ain't scared of zombies, but uh, yeah, it wouldn't surprise uh, you. It probably happens all the time on, we, the, on we, these we, panels. We, we could have had Rob come out there and do a zombie bit. And, like, yeah, come and yeah. yeah. Instead of doing this, Rob, what's going on? Like you, you you're, you're. Uh, Let's bring Rob on. Well, you. Let's so, bring Rob's Rob on. So anyway. 
Robert, let me tell you about what I did in Laguna Beach. Let's hear it. Well, <laughs> Rob sits here. Well, well okay, so you're so, so, so ostensibly. Imagine hey, Jimmy up. Fallon going, let's bring on Dick Cavett. Dick Cavett, come out here. Here we go. So, anyway, let me talk to everybody else but Dick Cavett. What? That doesn't make there. any sense. And you're also, I've been talking to this fucking guy about Walking Dead for the last five minutes. Will you roll your eyes within my eye shot? Are you, are, now you, I'm in your eye you're, shot? You're, you're being just, I'm in your eye shot? Whatever you directors call it, I don't give a fuck. Fucking art school pussies. Sorry, Robert. That's okay. I can feel you rolling your eyes, man. It's not, it's not kind. I wasn't rolling my eyes. Field of view. That's what it's called. Field Anyways, field. like, Schraub, you're equal parts mad that I'm talking about Laguna Beach and that I'm talking to our guest, to the, uh, Robert Kirkman. So I don't think you're a hero here. Let's not high road me about my hosting skills. Okay. If I if I do an in depth Charlie Kaufman or Charlie Kaufman, what do you call him? What's the Charlie, Charlie Rose? Kaufman. Charlie Rose interview uh, uh, with Robert Kirkman. You're gonna be you're gonna be more sad than than all the Laguna Beach anecdotes in the world would make you. You'd be you'd be you'd be incensed. Yeah. What's going on with you? What well, I don't know. What <laughs> What do you mean? I got what? one of those bidet toilet seats that you have, but it fucking won't f- great. It right? won't fit on my toilet. You got like a bidet? It doesn't fit on my toilet. It didn't fit on the toilet. You gotta make Kirkman, that... do you use a bidet? Come on. Went to a hotel that had a boat, uh, bidet. Whoa. And uh, was, did not enjoy that. I'll do you have a fancy idea. bathroom? No, not really. Whew. Just too wet. So, so you, there's, there's an attachment you can put on your existing toilet. You take your toilet it's a new seat toilet off seat. that you are, that's, comes with the toilet, and then right. you put the new one on. It, it, it's got a heated... It's a heat seat. Because I've been on yours, and yours is like this weird, like, like it plays you music, it like it massages you. There's, yeah. lo- there's a lot of buttons on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Very... I need to upgrade. I need to uh, you take gotta... it to the uh, Bidet Apple Store and upgrade that shit. Get me some, get me some new apps. You know what my... you guys share as artists is a, is a very storyboard style. Whoa. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. So I don't care much for bidets. <laughs> um... <laughs> So what happens is you, you put a thing on, you take your toilet seat off, you put this piece of machinery on it, and there's yep. a little hose that shoots water up your butt? Yeah. It's more yeah. of a nozzle. It's a nozzle. Yes. It's like how an upside-down spray bottle. How do you work on the aim of those things? I mean, I was at a hotel. Well, I imagine you can adjust, a, but you, so you got to rock kinda, it gotta, back and forth if you, you got to get like the Oh, you experience. move during it. That's yeah. interesting. That's what I was, I was doing I was wrong. In, you don't have to, but I do. Ro- Robert, well, you're a master, I'm Robert, I was in India recently. and A lot of bidets in India? A lot of bidets... But not in, we stayed in very like um, you know because it was an English colony for so long very very westernized hotels so there were no bidets in the hotels we stayed at but a couple of the places we went to like nice restaurants in nice areas in the men's room I, I, I'm assuming the women's room too there was just a hose like a garden hose with a tss, like, a, like a nozzle a squeeze nozzle yeah and it's just laying on the floor next to the toilet and like that's, there's, and there's no paper that's not clean there's no paper at all. So you're supposed to get up and just hose off your butt, and then you got a wet butt, and you pull your pants up. I, I, I or, do, or do you, or do you just drip dry? Like there's people outside waiting just, to hose off bring, their butts. You just bring non into the bathroom with you. You bring. Oh, you see now that's. I see. I, 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 I bring some Papa Dom. Is that not okay? I bring the Papa Dom. It's, it's a little fl- lighter and flakier. That must. That must be. They must be. That must be some good Indian food if they got like hoses for your butt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's food so spicy, you, you're going to want to hose your asshole. Yeah. <laughs> hose off your but w- uh, given the choice between a roll of toilet paper and it, but it, 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 you can't have both. Given a choice, the, you, these you, are, you I'm, choose I'm water. About, I'm talking about restrooms at nice restaurants that had no paper at all anywhere. And like you couldn't even go and get a paper towel and bring it into the thing with you. You had a hose on the ground. Right. That presumably everybody that's ever taken a poop there has recently used. Well, and you got to. Well, you don't stick it up your butt. You stand you get, up and you, you, you rinse your asshole off. But like, it, it, yeah. looked, it looked, it looked, yeah. it looked dry. So people know how to do that without spraying down right. the whole building. Well, because they don't. They, they yeah. probably they haven't had a toilet paper culture for like from rich to poor. Like they just don't use toilet yeah, paper. Yeah, but then you, then you I, I, t- somebody help me out. Go, well, it's into a I, hole. It, into the toilet bowl. Have you seen Slumdog also, Millionaire? It goes to India. Uh, yeah, but but like it didn't look wet. 
and people had been pooping in there. I, I mean, obviously they know how to do it delicately, but then I, I, my main thing is now you got a wet butt and a wet crotch, and then you just pull up your wet poopy drawers and but go, they're not poopy, go they're just back wet to now. have desserts. Ostensibly, they're just wet. Come on, we've all taken a big giant shit and then gotten right in the shower, right? At oh, least once. Oh, God, yeah. You have to. Just for the thrill of it. Have you to just get go right like, you know shower. what? Not wiping. Yeah. Got to got to take a shower no. anyway. No, right no. In. No. I've never done that. All right, then, then I haven't either. No, for, you for, haven't yeah, done that. I, not, not me. Not it. Not you, Kirkman. Come on. No, Look sorry. at us. No. I I've, I've taken a bath. I I've taken a shit so bad that I then had to take a shower afterwards even after I've cleaned up just yeah, because but that's like after there's the no wiper. way. There's yeah. no way I've handled this. How old are you kids? Uh, they'll be uh, they're eleven and eight. And they're about to turn nine and twelve. So, so yeah. both uh, boys, older boy, younger girl. Oh, see, I shit in the shower. Uh, so, and then I, <laughs> I, I don't. And then, probably the worst and then sound. I go, we can go to the toilet bowl. We can unpack my reaction for the next thirty minutes with the toilet bowl water. <laughs> I mean, even if we don't go to the creepy, <laughs> creepy place, it's just a dumb reaction to have. It's, oh. it's a standard biological amount of diversity. <laughs> Two kids, one's a I boy, one's a girl. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the you old seven ten split, eh? I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. That that to me, that was you making a sound to cover the fact that you could not care less about my children, and you it regretted a, asking that question. No, you I, did, like, I, I didn't. Why did I ask it, about kids? I don't care about right. kids. You're half right. It was a, it was a it was a standard uh, bad interviewer nervous tick like I need to have a reaction we, uh, uh, but it was, I didn't you? regret asking it because I'd love to talk to a genius about uh, having kids because I, I, it's uh, I'm sure you're, not to put you on the spot but I'm sure you're going to say things that no one's ever said let's hear it <laughs> <laughs> how old were you when you had your first child uh, oh uh, 27 oh respectable age yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a solid third baseline hit and and my, my wife hates it when I talk about it, but you know uh, I'm from Kentucky, and um, you know everybody has kids when they're like 21, 22, 23. So we were Same we were like we were Midwest. late late in the game at 27. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, us There's too. Was, to Wisconsin, do. same thing. I mean, it's kind of like you, you, you not you know like basically like the two cities that dinosaurs and uh, King Kongs don't attack in the movies. Wait, or do attack. Those are the only exceptions. Everywhere else, I think people get married pretty pretty quickly after high school. Yeah, yeah you, you know, it's the King Kong and the Godzilla factor that really um, no, that's not I was keeps. Just, uh, why, look, do you, yeah, why do you I, keep I, having I, him on? Yeah, I, it, 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 yeah. It, thank you. I keep asking the same thing <laughs> the whole time. I keep thinking I, he'll bring I, my I, iPad back. I, th- I, he, I keep getting texts from Levy like, going, "Are you coming?" Are you bringing? Hey, the are you iPad? coming, Rob? Are can you I? Gonna, can are you, the show's starting. Are you gonna? You gonna be here? <laughs> you gonna be here? The show's starting. Are you I'm, on your way? Are you still coming, right? It's because we're worried. About we had you. to. We had to have Shrab on ah, for uh, okay. the third installment. Do you think that psychologically, the reason I'm 44 and haven't had children is because I grew up in a place that's so likely to get King Konged or Godzilla <laughs> yeah. or meteor attacked? That's I, because I we know, live in a bleak. Yeah. Well, why have a child why if you know that any moment you're going to get Armageddon? Godzilla. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, t- Tommy Lee Jones is going to be on your doorstep screaming about something. New York yeah. and Los Volcanoes. Angeles, more so Los Angeles than New York. A geostorm. Uh, because New York has people that lift things and fish for things. But you know, like these two big cities, people go to them because they're like still not giving up on their fucking like, I'm going to, I'm still a baby. I'm going to, I'm going to have a big pacifier in my mouth. It's going to be made of solid gold. And sometimes I can take till you're 45. I, I, it's interesting to be twice the age of the average Rick and Morty viewer and to be like oh this person would be my kid if I had kids when my Wisconsin DNA kind of said that it was time to have kids like this this would be my kid and he's an idiot Mm -hmm. (laughs) and he likes your show that does not make you smart it it, it doesn't make you stupid but it doesn't make you smart it's a popular show a lot of idiots love it I like it. Isn't your friend Church? Isn't Ross your buddy on, on that show? Ross Marquand? 
Somebody said that in an Instagram comment. Like, somebody was like calling me out because I like I made fun of some kid that said some shitty crap about my girlfriend. Like, you know, it's like whatever. I, go ahead, you make fun of my girlfriend or make fun of me for being. She's too hot to be with me, so she must be a gold digger. Okay, look, uh, uh, First Amendment uh, engaged, and now I get to fucking abuse you verbally, like with all of my Kevin Spacey fucking venom gland that I never get to inject into a Warner Brothers executive. So, okay, good. Here it is. <laughs> You're a piece of fucking human garbage, and your parents must be ashamed of yourself and then the 40,000 like comments of whoa you know put him on blast must be nice to have 200,000 followers I don't give a fuck if any of you live or die stop telling me how to react what happened just now but here's something well I'm trying to uh, I think think you should keep that iPad and zombies are followers in a way aren't they trying to get to my point I'm gonna pay for it Trying to get to my point. So, so somebody, 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 then somebody, I noticed that it's like, I went, I went back to one of the Instagram things, uh, and I'm like looking through the aftermath of when I like, like put a kid on blast on the reg, as the fam says. Um, and, uh, and it says, <laughs> like, on blast uh, good or bad? Is it, there's do, a do bunch of want, like, you didn't need to put him on blast, bro. I put him on blast. That seems like punch it down. I put him on blast. I'm like, yeah, fuck, go, go. Were you clapping? You, back you can all go facts? fuck yourselves. Can, we, can I just interrupt you just to say that being put on blast sounds like the coolest thing? Like, today? I know, like, it does sound, like, it's like an aqua fresh commercial. I've been put on blast. <laughs> they call it. Wake up being while you sleep on blast. It's cool. Get you out of that bed. That sounds like the new. Trying to put your teeth on blast. That sounds like the new drop and loads. You know, Quip puts your teeth on blast with its new vibrating uh, toothbrush head that I've you get in the that. mail. It's an absolutely fantastic You've been product. put on blast. I, I have to the person honest. said in the Instagram comment that that that, that caught my attention was, uh, "Hey, uh, yeah, why?" Uh, and you wonder why it is that you have such shitty fans in response to me being shitty to one of my shitty fans. Like in other words, oh, I'm such a toxic person then I'm going to go ahead and tell a kid to go fuck himself for being a piece of garbage to my girlfriend. Oh, that explains everything. That's why I have shitty fans. Yeah, everyone. They're the shadow I cast by being a shitty person. Or it's a popular show and everyone's an idiot. Everyone on Adult Swim is a fine member of society until Rick and Morty came If I self-actualize, I'll create a show that has perfect fans. And then I'll engage with all of them on the internet and not kill myself like ever. Low dollar. That's Dan, a reasonable expectation. Dan, right now, like not Trump and not like the administration, but like who right now, like something a little more obscure, if you could put anybody on blast right now. <laughs> well, Kirkman wants to... I, you put me on blast? Why not? Whoa. You said, you said, what did I do? Well, don't uh, put my guests on am, blast. I, am I being a boring guest? Have you put me on blast oh, God, for no, being, being boring? Incredibly Our patient. Are Zach, to be on Zach fleek. you got to beat. I, I say we have a blast off right now. I say. I say. Yeah. I say. I say Damn, put put either Robert Kirkman or anybody else on blast. Jeff right doesn't know it on blast. Like, get it off your chest. I know the, yeah, it, on blast is kind of like doxing, right? It's sort of like like. <laughs> I don't think it's. Like I, I always thought being put on blast it's was like a good thing. It's like sticking your fans on. Them, it's kind of it? like clapping back with facts. Clapping back the facts? Yeah. Have you ever clapped back with facts? No, I haven't clapped back with facts. Oh. Have you tried Equifax? Yo. Have you heard of a clap back with facts attack? Yo. No. Have you heard of a Big Mac attack? No. Yo. Have you heard of a <laughs> quack attack? Yo. No. I'm a duck with two web feet. Gonna rap real soon and rap real neat. Gonna tell you about a quack attack. Clap back attack. Big Mac attack. Gonna do the smack attack. Got, I need more heroin in my veins. Even though I'm a duck, I can't explain. I can't explain why I want to trip on drugs. Because I live on the rug. But I can fly when I want to. Ain't a chicken. I can do what I want to. Up in the air like an all-terrain chicken. All-terrain chicken. All-terrain chicken. I'm a duck. Put it on my bill, motherfucker. All right. All-terrain chicken. <coughs> All right, so, now, Hell yeah. Just to clarify for our audience, who was on blast during that? Ducks uh, or, or? I think Big Max. Max. Big, Big Max. Max. Big Max. Big Max. <laughs> and a lot of the, the kids don't know this, but the, in the golden age of rap, 1980, <laughs> uh, the, the, the rap, I think it was Rapper's Delight. There was, was it, was it, somebody, it begins with like a little dialogue exchange, and somebody's like, hey, man, have you ever heard of a rap attack? And, then, and the other person's like, what? I've heard of a Big Mac attack, but I ain't heard of no rap attack. Well, a rap attack is what... And they're, like, they're explaining what a rap attack is. They haven't even explained what rap is yet. All right. Maybe they're also, trying. Also, they're promoting McDonald's. It's weird. Yeah. Like, put, yeah. put them on blast. You should be <laughs> rapping about McDonald's. I, I, I think... I mean, if, I, I'm not sure I'm getting what, what on blast is right. Well, all right. Do you want to be put on blast? Wait, wait, wait. Spencer, I trust you. You're the youngest one up here. What is what is being put on blast exactly? I think maybe Dan should put Jeff on blast. Okay. Zach, I'll put, put you on blast so on. you can tell. Put, put Zach, th- drop a beat. <laughs> Yo. Yo. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. Yo. Are you about to put me on blast? Yeah. Just listen. Yo. Pay attention. Yeah. 
Am I about to put you on blast? Yo, this motherfucker wants to know if I'm going to put him on blast. Yo, oh, I'm glad you shit. asked because that question is how blast gets asked. Yo, your ass is on blast. I'm so glad you asked if you're going to put on blast because ask rhymes with blast. I'm glad you asked and now you're on blast. Blast, ask, ask the blast. You just asked for blast. Now you're on blast. Oh. You're on blast for asking. I'm blasting and my hip flasking. Drank some vodka. Now I'm going to say your mama should have gone away. She did. That's not. Uh, Jeff's mom yeah, actually she, died in she real died, life. She died when I was 13. Well, but go on. Now go you're on, on blast, go motherfucker, on. for being an orphan. Yo, this guy ain't got oh, no parents anymore. His Both his mom and his dad have to go. My, my, oh, my, da- my dad is still alive. His dad oh, oh. is still alive. All right, then your dad's on blast. Yo, Professor Davis, Ignatius. Ignatius Davis, I'm here to say it's maybe time for you to go away. You're on blast, motherfucker. Leave Jeff behind. You've, 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 your life's been fine. Mission accomplished. Go, just go. Don't talk to him no more. Make him feel bad. Make him feel alone. It's what he deserves when he calls me on the phone and says, Can you please put me on blast? Oh, motherfucker, I'm glad you asked. Blast rounds with asked, so I can't be on blast. Okay, but you'll be sorry you asked. Will I be sorry I asked or glad I asked? Motherfucker, why don't you use an Indian toilet to wipe your ass? Because it's just a hose. There's no paper. Dude, fuck you. All right. Hell yeah. All right. So, so does that explain So it? being put on blast is you trying to wish that both of my parents were dead. Well, that's not. Yeah. I, I, look. So that's rude. It's, it's kind of like, like throwing shade. Blasts aren't controllable. I mean, it's not like a controlled demolition. Yeah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not being put on bullets. I didn't put you on like a on, clean on OSHA standard, like collapsing of a skyscraper that there was a city supervisor present for. You I put, put you on blasts. Robert, weren't you on Grandma's Virginity, Justin Roiland's uh, podcast at yes. one point? I believe a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that like? Slightly more professional than this. Really? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, was God, the I mean, room as big though? This is a bigger room, it's right? A bigger room, it's a much right? bigger room. Yeah, <laughs> good, <laughs> good. <laughs> much bigger room. But did they promote your new comic book? No, definitely mm. not. Oblivion right. song. Oblivion song by Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo De Felici. Oh my He's God. He's Italian. Racist. <laughs> Well, it's not, I don't think it's racist to say that based on well, his name. Well, when you it say it like, like if, that, if you don't read his book, you you may wake up dead. I was just in Italy. They do all talk like Mario. They do? Whoa. No, I'm just kidding. Let's go. <laughs> is that is that bad? Is that No, I no. Know. I I've, I was been imp- on the internet today. Can no, that was a wool of impression. Like I was impressed. Like it, that's it, it is it is exciting when you go to a foreign country and they actually like, you meet somebody and they actually do like the thing that you would think would be stereotypical. Like I was in a car. I probably said this before a long time ago in Harmontown, but I got into a car when I got to like Naples and was driving. And, he, and we were talking, and he's like, how many people live in uh, in Los Angeles? I don't know, like 25 million. He goes, "Mamma mia." <laughs> And I, 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 he was in the front, and I was in the back, and I'm looking at him like, is he, is he fucking doing? A th- am I on he candy just camera? Just do that for tourists. But he gave, he actually gave me a full on Mamma Mia, and then I was in Paris, and I got a, I got a, like a few for real. Ooh la la, they really fucking say it. They say, they say ooh la la. In Italy, in Paris, <laughs> in Paris. Yes, that's it's, where it, they it, say it. Yeah, in Italy they say Mamma Mia, and that's they say Mamma Mia in Italy. Italy. Yes. And then they say... In France, they say, ooh la la. So Oblivion ooh-la-la. Song is ooh-la-la. a science fiction comic book. Ooh-la. It's yeah. uh, got all kinds of great stuff in it. It's super cool. I don't so know. why Ro- is Robert the Oblivion... March 7th. I don't What's see so these... hypnotic about the Oblivion Song? And in China, they go, oh, hell no. I don't see any zombies in here. No, no. zombies. No, no, I decided that they don't come in until later. Hmm. All right, but, uh, well, but let's yeah. give it a chance. Let's try to change it up a little bit. I mean, I'm in a what, rut, but I'm what, not in that much of a rut. What's the log line on Oblivion Song? Can you Can you reveal that? Oh, the log line is terrible. Uh, no, I, 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 it's just, <laughs> well, then you I, I, it's you, you, a complicated idea, but it, it's basically there's like 300,000 people in Philadelphia that get uh, uh, sent to another dimension. Basically, uh, a large landmass in Philadelphia transposes with a large landmass in another dimension. And then uh, uh, our main character, uh, Nathan Cole, is a scientist who is tasked with uh, trying to rescue those people. But when our story takes place, it's been 10 years. They've stopped finding people. They've lost funding. And he is still going over there and uh, doing it because his brother is lost in that dimension. But so he's going th- to get his are brother. Are there people from the other dimension now populating that part of Philadelphia? There's no people in the other dimension. It's a very primitive uh, uh, alien world with like monsters and all so kinds of crazy stuff. So now Philly's got some monsters rolling around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they're going. Or down it did ten years ago, and they've all been cleaned out, and there's like a museum and stuff. They're so. walking down to the strip and getting some fucking Primani brothers and fucking. Oh, that's Pittsburgh. Sorry. It's like a land of decay. 
And if your mouth is a land of decay, you should brush it. And the way that you can ensure your brush won't go soft uh, as you use it, at which point it becomes so ineffective that most dentists say you may as well stop, hit yourself in the face with a hammer than keep brushing with your expired shitty Target toothbrush, go to the good people at Quip. Uh, they mail you a new toothbrush head every fucking statistical period the, when you need it. I don't know. It's, it's a millennial toothbrush club. It's time to put gingivitis on blast. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Quip is the uh, toothbrush of choice at uh, Oblivion Song headquarters. Oh, really? Yeah. Keep your mouth out of Oblivion. You, you and Fer Ferdinand de Flee. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of... It's not okay to call him Ferdinand. His name is Lorenzo. I saw somebody. Is Ferdinand there's a, Italian? Uh, there's no way that uh, Annalisa Leone, your colorist, is related to Leo Leone, the famous children's book author who left us. A few I don't years believe ago. so. Yeah, it's probably a common name. Yeah, yeah. It's just Leone's like growing on trees over in Italy. Yeah, probably. So, how many issues do you have, and what, 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 what? Uh, I mean, how many do you? How many? What character are people going to be cosplaying at at the next Comic Con? Oh boy, uh, there's a cool character named Keith that comes in in issue three that looks awesome. Are you going to be uh, right back on the monthly schedule where you're just like, I got to write an Oblivion well, song this month? Yeah, I mean, we've actually been working on that book in secret for almost two years, so that you know I can keep on the monthly schedule without wanting to kill myself. That's awesome. So uh, we've we, we're working on, working on issue twelve right now, but issue one comes out in uh, on March seventh, and so we're basically a year ahead of schedule. Is your 11-year-old smart? Yes. Would you tell me if he was stupid? Yeah. He's not listening to this. Yeah, I would just ask you to edit it out later. Right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is he, is he, like, is he a nerd? He is, uh, yeah, I mean, he plays the video games. He doesn't do the sports. And how old's the daughter? Uh, she's eight, will be nine. So they're both, like, asking a lot of questions about uh, birds and clouds and stuff. <laughs> Not really. They're answering my questions about birds and clouds and stuff. Oh, uh, but uh, no. I mean, they're you know they're very creative. Uh, my my. What don't daughter, you know about birds and clouds? No, I'm just I'm just saying they. Where they, you find them? I don't know. They're know it alls. They're like yeah, uh, they're not yeah. coming to you. How, how aware are they of your like celebrity status? Are you like like what like the the role you play in? That part is frustrating. I mean, they're very aware. I mean, much more aware now that they're in school because the other kids in school like hear things from their parents or older siblings or whatever, and so. Like my son comes home from school and is like, "Oh, I hear, uh, I hear you're pretty, uh, pretty popular." And I'm like, oh, what, "What are you talking about?" Eddie Van Halen's kid says, <laughs> yeah. "My dad's some kind of mucky muck." Exactly. Well, there was one cool. There was one day where he came home and he was like, "Dad, the the middle school kids found out who my dad was, and they were talking to me. It was totally awesome." <laughs> and like all these like. 13, 14, 15 year olds were talking to him, and so he was like the king of the school for a day. Uh, so that was nice. But, uh, but yeah, they, uh, uh, the, the frustrating part is like I was on the Conan O'Brien show, and so uh, I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm totally on this talk show. You guys should watch the segment. And, uh, and I put him on the couch, you know, because if I was a kid and my dad had come home and been like, I'm on television, I would have right. jumped up and been like, What? Are you kidding me? Like, holy crap, you know, I would have lost my mind. And my kids are like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then I turn it on, and they're like, okay, can we go? Do we have to watch this whole thing? And I was like, oh, what the hell? Like, they don't, they don't care. Well, so. they're probably they, either they don't care because you're enough without that. Which is it's normal to them, right? You know, like they're like, right. oh yeah, yeah, they've you're seen on, you on yeah. G four. Like, I've been on Talking for Thirty Dead years, and, yeah. yeah. They, Robert, they're, they're we, like, we, we can here at Harmontown give you a beat, and you can put your kids on blast right now if you want. <laughs> that you would can go horribly. <laughs> Just, I want to. I want to make that offer would rhyme. to anyone out there listening. We will put your kids on blast if you come on the show. Um, you can tell us whatever you want about them. We'll put them on blast for you, so you don't have to be guilty of it. Um, Cook your own meals. Yeah. Yeah. Robert, would you be comfortable with Dan putting your your kids on blast? Sure, please. It Zach, would be an honor. Zach, give us that beat. Kirk, Mc, Kirk McKids go on blast. All right. What, what are their, their names? Go. What are their names? I'm not telling you my okay. name. All right. Well, I'll, ma I'll, I'll make them up. I'll make them up. <laughs> All right. Where this, this one goes out to Where's Xander and uh, and Heather Kirkman. Xander <laughs> and Heather. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Oh God. Okay. That was. Yo, yo, Xander Kirkman. You think you're all that because you don't want to sit through a Conan segment? What's up with that? Fucking be appreciative. 
When when I was your dad's age, I had to walk up a hill both ways to get a fucking guest spot on a talk show. Fucking Xander Xander Kirkman. What kind of name is that? Fucking oh well, I guess that's your your it's dad like picks the name, so I'm kind of putting him on blast. Okay, well, all right, all right. Well, you have a dumb name, Xander, uh, and also you're ugly on the inside, and uh, your uh, your interests in school are mis uh, mis mis misapplied. Like you think soccer is cool because you're uh, you're you're not seeing the big picture. You're gonna regret it. And uh, 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 wh- wh- how-, how come you haven't told your dad uh, about your interest in musicals? Let's move on to Heather. Uh, nice hair. Maybe a couple too many ribbons. You think people are going to think you're protesting too much? Uh, if, you're, if your hair is enough, why so many ribbons? It's not a gift. Uh, and and that and that uh, that that uh, that 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 uh, uh, Austin Powers impression you keep doing. People are just pretending it's funny because you're eight, Heather Kirkman. Yeah, update your routine, Heather. Uh, but it really wouldn't be putting two kids on blast if I didn't follow it up with. I think to go to their Instagram and shit on them. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's Xander Kirk. Underscore 69, real nice. I don't approve of that one. And Heather, uh, Heather, Heather Doodles, uh, uh, underscore 69. Brooks best friend, underscore tendon befriend, uh, underscore. I mean, I feel bad for these kids. They have to keep, they can't, not all the names are taken now. But, anyways, go put her on blast. Couple of assholes, those kids. Yeah, I mean, you're on well, blast. They, they they're gonna have to straighten up their act now after hearing this. Like That'll be good for them. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna make them listen to this every morning when they get up. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna wake them up with this, <laughs> and I'm gonna change their names to Xander and Heather. <laughs> <laughs> they're better than the ones they have. <laughs> they didn't like the Conan segment. They're gonna love this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess if, I. If the middle school kids thought they were famous. Because you're you, when they find out that they're on blast from Dan Harmon, it's gonna oh. really oh my god take it over the edge. Yeah. I guess I regret not having kids. Uh, <laughs> you know? No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, because he, you still can. <laughs> he, 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 you wish you had a couple eight-year-olds running around the house to put on blast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I noticed like like kids like they kind of like they they do like, like when they're really young they kind of laugh at sillier characters that my friends don't laugh at anymore. You know, like I like can, what? Like I can just go like, oh, Mister, I'm Mister Arm Waver, and then like a three year old will be like, that's amazing, and that kinda, wears off at five. Uh, let me just yeah. tell you. I know, but then you, I, I imagine you come up with new shit, right? No, no. Nah. All right. Well, then I don't want kids. But uh, you want a dumber audience? You can find a dumber audience. I cannot trust me. You just gotta have dumber material. Uh, I sure. uh, have you tried puppets? I have a niece. I've never <laughs> Raise, met. Raises puppets. She's like, <laughs> I don't know how old my niece is right now. Anybody go to my brother's Facebook? Uh, is, it, is that Bones' niece? Yeah. Bones Wouldn't it be weird niece? if I knew? <laughs> I would yeah, Bones' love niece. It. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> Your niece is seven. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I think she's like full. She's like a full. I'm drone. such a fan, like Dan. A, uh, I follow your brother's Instagram. She loves dinosaurs. She plays violin. That's what I know about my niece. Well, that's at least thirteen. She's been playing it for a while. It's, just, it's not like a, a phase, and it's like she's overpraised she or anything. Start she's like good a, at the violin. Yeah. She started on like a real small violin? I, d- I assume so. I, like I this? I've never had kids, so I don't know how it works. <laughs> what, what that? Did she start with the smallest <laughs> violin in the world? Believe me, if I ever have a family, they're all going to need to be virtuosos in the world's smallest violin. <laughs> I will come home <laughs> with complaints. Um, Donna Schraub would do that a lot, my mother. She'd go like this. She'd go, mm, you know what this is. I can't, I can't imagine people doing that in real life. Oh God, yeah. That was that was uh, that's yeah. I, I think it that only works com- once too. That's no, what well, I mean. Not, not in the, the drop house. You do that to someone, it's kind of like, oh God, you know I what this it. is? Is this of the violin yeah. in the world? Yes. Here's something I, I don't understand. It's a fucking violin. Move on. Yeah. It's, it's already sarcasm, it but then it undercuts itself by being genuine sarcasm. I'm playing the world's smallest violin for you. It's like when people say I 
could care less. I'm like, well, thank you for caring more than you do. Yeah, it should be the I, I'm playing the world's biggest violin. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, you yeah. always say, it like it's sarcasm, but it's a small violin. You've shrunk it down. Like your sarcasm is. I can't totally even undercut. see it. I think yeah. it, it comes more down to not not the people not understanding the like irony, is that most parents are really bad at space work. So like if you so I'll play right, that's what I was gonna game. say. You couldn't. <laughs> like, that, that requires more calories. Yeah, you more couldn't work. do it's a bigger one. It's too close to a hug. <laughs> Yeah. It would open you up to a hug from your fucking abused yeah. child to play the world's largest mime violin. It would be too close to hugging them. You pieces of sh baby you, boomer uh, shit. Robert, Robert, you know, ruined our country. Do you, ever, do, you ever, do you ever find yourself using some of those like uh, parents' greatest hits on your children, like smallest violin or... I used to walk uphill both ways. You know. Everything you touch turns to shit. Yeah. Um, uh, why don't you write us a story about a little boy that gets caught playing with matches and lives to regret it? Yeah. When's the fourth season coming out? Uh, your, <laughs> my, your sister doesn't exist. My dad gave me bloody lips all the time. Why are you complaining? <laughs> that kind of thing. One of those. I'll, I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah. <laughs> this 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 room is a mess. Um, I'm about to. I'm gonna tear it apart w using a vacuum cleaner as a blunt instrument because I'm shit faced. I'm going. Oh, to, I'm going to. I'm going to use a vacuum cleaner like a fucking Dothraki broadsword <laughs> to symbolically make your room messier than it ever could have been. Uh, All right, uh, Jeff. Uh, here's your leg warmers. I'm taking you off of the baseball field. <laughs> <laughs> because it's jazz dance class time. <laughs> and I said that in front of all of your baseball team. Do you, you ever use that one in your kids? That's yeah. good. I have used that one, but it was basketball, not baseball. Okay, so, well, yeah. it's, it's, it's parallel. Stop yeah. asking me questions about looking for Mr. Goodbar. I, can't, I don't know where to store these books if it's not in your bedroom. Wait, I don't, that one, I don't, I don't get, get that one either. Very specific. What's the, what's, the, what's the Mr. Goodbar one? I thought these were parental classics that we were doing. That's the one with peanuts, right? Yeah. Are they peanuts? They're too small to be peanuts. They're like little They're mini peanut peanuts. fragments. Mr. Like Goodbark is is yeah, it's milk chocolate with like very sickly like peanuts yeah. that were rejected a from atrophied. The, their holding companies yeah. like they, they didn't make the payday cut. Yeah. Like, yeah this is this is the fucking the, the shit that fell through the payday sieve. It's peanut laundering. That's yeah. what Mr. Goodbar is. Sweep the floor at the yeah, payday you know, factory. Hey, yeah, and guess what? No, you're ship Mr. It to the Mr. Goodbar. You're in a Mr. Goodbar, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for being the worst peanut ever, you we'll fucking... We'll call it Mr. Good Bar, and no one will know how bad the candy bar <laughs> that, is. That's what tater tots are. Tater tots, they, they, were, they were making french fries, and there was all these little like shaved ends, and there was, just all the, there was all this potato debris they kept just throwing away. Or is sending that true? To, sending like pig farms and like, like, like cattle feed. And, and some genius goes, hey, let's fucking throw some oil on that shit and put them in a little weird barrel-shaped cylinder. And they're fucking... So they're like the, little potato hot dogs? It, it, it's, it's, the, it's potato debris. And and it's great. It's what it's that's why they're, they're like the underdog of, of the of the potato world. They're pretty good. The only <laughs> the only peanuts that are worse than Mr. Goodbar peanuts are the ones that become crushed nuts of uh, uh, like that they use as condiments. Can you imagine what those fuckers uh, did wrong? This Black Panther movie is really like burning up the charts. Do you guys see it? <laughs> you see this? <laughs> I Everybody's it. talking about this Black Panther. I, I, I haven't seen it yet, but people are saying it's really burning up the charts. I'll tell you this much. When the armored rhinos come out, you get ready. Yeah? When you go see it? Yeah. Oh, man. I it's, haven't seen it. It's this my this favorite this, part. This, this movie is it? apparently yeah. doing Ooh. so well that there's a new saying called burning up the charts. It's burning <laughs> up the charts. People I, are really saying. I, I like that people are really saying that it's burning up the charts. People are really saying it's burning up the charts. People are saying it's been burning up the charts. It's burning up the charts. It, it sounds like a bad movie that wants to burn up the, 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 the top ten no, charts. No, but this is the difference. It's it's a good movie that's burning up the charts. And in fact, what's the number? Uh, can you give us the top five on the on, on the burned up, burned up charts? Like who who else is burning up the charts right now? Number number five, <laughs> Black Panther, <laughs> starting at the charts. Number four, getting a little medium hot, Black Panther again. <laughs> is uh number three, getting lukewarm. Black Panther. Oh. Number number two. Here comes Black Panther getting this whole thing. Getting cool hot. Enough. And now number one, Black Panther completely burning up all five slots of the charts. Uh. Going to the top. Marvel's burning Going up the charts. Top. It's this a good movie. People this, are this telling me it's a good movie. Sounds like Black Panther's burning up the, the Black Panther only charts. People are starting to say that, yeah. People, people are really starting to say that. 
It's becoming well known. Armored rhinos. That's cool. Yeah, it's fun. You've yeah. seen it. Is that a spoiler? Am I going to be bummed out to know? Oh, those huge rhinos? spoiler. You're oh, gonna you're yeah. gonna be like, oh, that's why they keep on setting up all these rhino uh, horn shaped doors. <laughs> 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 The protagonist is, a, is an armorer who, who keeps making giant... <laughs> All these strange hieroglyphs about a, a beast. There probably is some poacher justice porn in it, right? Because it takes place all in Africa, in Wakanda, like, no which poacher. is a... No poacher oh, there's stuff. no poacher that no poacher like stuff. has like a, just a vibranium weight fall on his head <laughs> while he's like about to shoot an elephant. I guess they touch on human trafficking. Do you, you think Pornhub has, porn has a tag for poacher justice? Of course. Po- poacher justice porn? Yeah. Poacher justice porn... Probably save the poacher stuff for the sequel. Yeah. Did I step on your song? I apologize. No, no, no. Uh, hey, please, um, go ahead. No, it's okay. Drop a beat. All right. Don't drop a beat. <laughs> I will pick song. it up and put it. It's uh, Wakanda is a is an African nation that uh, has uh, it, they had like an Area Fifty One style crash or something so they well, had they had started that way they like, had early access to vibranium yeah from the beginning of society they kind of have it so right. like they've always uh, evolved with this kind of better technology in theory that's why they're they're like future future style it's a fun idea great great can great anyone movie. explain the the thing because i all i see all i all i'm catching third fourth fifth so societal hand is the idea that that detractors of the movie that are t- obsessed with that, like pointing out that Wakanda's not real, I don't, I don't quite, I don't understand. Is that a, is that just a, is that just a thing that people are pretending that people care about, or is there like an actual like why does that? What I'm, I'm just. It's a weird one. I, I don't it's a weird what, one to pick. For superhero movies, oh, that place isn't real. What, why right. is that? Exactly. A, why yeah. is that a place I, to I go? I can't suspend my disbelief on a, on a, on a place name. If never heard of Gotham. <laughs> is that a, well? Whatever. I guess I just have a bunch of rhetorical questions that would probably just fan flame. Let's, Let's hear the top five top rhetorical, five rhetorical questions. questions. Top five, Dan Harmon's Top five rhetorical questions. Number five. Starting with number three. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, are you asking that because you want Africa to be worse off than it is? Number two. <laughs> <laughs> are you worried Africa will get a good rap? Number five. Uh, are, are, have you noticed the total absence of a Hogwarts in your neighborhood? No. Number one. Uh, Number one. Are you racist? Just say you're racist, and we can be friends, and I'll have a racist friend. Like, like, like I, I, we'll just get through your white racism. I'm, I, I'm an alcoholic. I, we all have problems. Great question. Number four. <laughs> <laughs> um, does there even need to be a number four? Yes, That's there it. does. That's it. Well, it was it, yeah, it one. was meta. That was good. Is there ever any meta moments in uh, Walking Dead comics? Does, uh, does anyone ever, ever look at the uh, panel camera and go, <sighs> they see the more line. like uh, every issue? You're not yeah. going to like the next page. Yeah. <laughs> like just to the camera. <laughs> I did do a thing recently. Uh, I'm going to spoil recent issues of Walking Dead just so I have something to talk about. Um, <laughs> because. Uh, uh, well, just just stop listening if you don't want recent issues. They get out of the prison. Yeah, I know a couple that. minutes. Well, no, they, they come to a new community, and, and Michonne, who's a character that's been in the book for a very long time, finds out that her daughter is alive she and walks well. The, and, and she walks the, the, she's the one who learns yeah, the technique of cutting off their jaws and walking them around as, uh, as, as walker camouflage. That is her. Uh, and so uh, so she, she finds her daughter, and it's like two straight issues of all positive like happy cliffhangers and she's reunited with her daughter and it's all happy like, cliffhangers. Yeah. It's all good news. Cause there's, you know, it, it was like 175. And so we've done 174 issues where all the cliffhangers are all just misery. Right. You know, like this guy's getting his hand cut off. And, and then you're like, this guy's mom you finally ended one half. where someone's shaking a gift box and it sounds like a puppy, but it could be a kitten. And then it's a puppy. And you're like, Hey, <laughs> and so I was convinced that people would be pissed off. And so when, when we revealed that the daughter's actually alive, she works at a bakery. And she comes out holding a cake, and she sees her mother, who she's thought was dead for the last many, many years, living in the zombie apocalypse, and she drops the cake that she's holding. Right. And so, uh, so I was like, if people really hate this, 
they'll say that instead of the comic jumping the shark in this issue, they'll be like, this is the issue where they drop the cake. Right. It'll I, was become a new to, thing. I was trying to create my own, like, right. like uh, nuking mm-hmm. the fridge, you know? But uh, I so get what far, you people have but liked it. A happy Aww. cliffhanger is a hopeful cliffhanger. That's yeah. that. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's you can still have a cliffhanger, but it can be hinged on hope. It's kind of an interesting concept because, correct me if I'm wrong, but a, a hopeful cliffhanger actually is you're still laying. A, it's just a question of whether you're saying, <laughs> "Oh shit, something horrible <laughs> right, right. did happen." We'll see you next week, or saying, "Oh shit, I just found out my." Daughter is alive, but I haven't talked to her yet. Tune in yeah, next week. Yeah, and well, and hopefully after you know, fifteen years of The Walking Dead, when I present a character like Michonne with a living daughter, the audience is going, "Oh man, is she going to die soon? Like, is this going to get taken away? Is this right. going to get ugly quickly? Like, you know, hopefully people are having those worries. We'll see. Maybe they're The Walking Dead. The readers, the viewers. You don't even like TV. Just say it. Say that they're <laughs> the people that read the comic book are the Walking Dead. The people that are no wait. I'm sorry. They're the they're the Walking uh, the Reading Dead. They're the what good. They're the saying? no. They're the normal. They're the reading humans. The people that sure. watch the TV show. They're the viewing dead. Yeah. I, I got drunk. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. I don't have a passion for television, but I do love it. I love working on it. I mean, I'm not going to be completely negative uh, about the whole thing. No, I, no I one's love, gonna. I love my viewership, Dan. Oh, no, no, no They're one's going to They're all fantastic no people. None of you. them ever annoy me on Twitter, not even a little bit. <laughs> Nobody ever, <laughs> nobody's ever uh, What's your tweeted secret? at Robert Kirkman no, with, no. A, with a uh, thought about the ninth season of your empire. No, this is, me, empire. this is me going through my Twitter feed. Oh, that's smart. Oh, that's great. Oh. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's insightful. Oh, yeah. wow. I go, yeah. I uh, hadn't thought of that. <laughs> yeah. Helpful. They're, they're right. Oh. I should have shipped those two characters. <laughs> Good. My favorite thing, I got to say, my favorite thing, I don't know if you get this on Twitter, uh, I, often I will get someone that says, I have great ideas for the next season of Walking Dead. Follow me so that we can DM. Yeah, I, I get I get, I get, like, I get, I get. Like the, there's an urgency to I it, get, too. I need to talk to you, and I can't tell you what I need to talk to you about. It's about yeah. Rick and Morty. Please DM me or follow yeah. me. because yeah. This is nothing I can say in public. Right, I, I can't cannot. give you these random ideas. Spoiler alerts. Uh, where un- someone else could see them. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand. For the it. same reason I will sue you if you do what I say, I can't say anything right now. But uh, I do. I, I, can I, I'll sound like a dick for a minute just to give you some cover. Um, he needs this. <laughs> Doesn't it frustrate you sometimes when people don't like understand what we do to the point where they feel like they need to give us ideas? It's what did, a dick! It, it did what? for. You're being such a <laughs> dick right now. <laughs> Sorry. You said, "Hey, can I be a dick right now?" Sorry. <laughs> he said something like, really like thoughtful. Oh, it's a good. And he was he was nice about it. Oh, All right, well, Strom. I'll you know try what? harder. These assholes think they can give us ideas. It's like we like. We're throwing yeah, ideas, ideas out are, that we it, can't it, get to. What the, the hell? It frustra- The thing that frustrates me is, uh, and I swear to God, it it, wa- it was for altruistic reasons because it was like more like, oh, I weep for our children kind of thing. It was frustrating to me for a while. Now I'm jaded. But it was frustrating to me for a while when 20 mid kids in their mid-20s, otherwise known as grown-ass humans, yeah. um, uh like who clearly like have successfully been conned by the society that I grandfathered into, like into thinking that television is like a water or gas company or something. It's a, because they simply have a problem with the temperature of it coming out of their tap, which means they're never going to create anything. And I know that I'm not I, as amazing as I am. I know that the fact that I ended up in Hollywood making my own shit had sure. must have had something to do with the fact that at some point along the line, somebody told me in some way that resonated with me, you know, you could do it too. You could just do it, and I feel like when I read, I used to feel sad when I would read certain shit, like where I'd be like, wow, you think TV is toothpaste, and you don't know that your parents buy your toothpaste. <laughs> like, you think that you're just mad at 25 that the TV came out wrong, and you're not even ashamed that you're saying, like, 
horrible shit to someone that, that you that is designed semantically to provoke their suicide over the fact that something wasn't written by you because you don't know you could write. Yeah. And that used to make me sad, but then I turned 45 and I was like, cha-ching, <laughs> enslaved population. Like Then they voted for Trump, and then I was like, stay dumb. Fucking let me, g give me five years, stay this stupid, let me out of here. I don't agree with any give of Give me this. your social security checks while <laughs> you're at it. That's braver than me. I commend that. I, I, yeah, I, but but I, when I was 30, when I was your age, <laughs> uh, when my kid was only 11... Uh, I, uh, I, 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 I'd be like, this is such a bummer, man. Like, 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 ugh. it's not that I'm smarter than kids. That it's, it's like, it's, it's just like, I had a school paper. They don't have a school paper. If they had a school paper, they wouldn't be saying this shit. Or they would have been saying it in the school paper and you never would have seen it. And they would have, they know? said it in the school paper and it would have activated them and they would have become a TV writer. Yeah. But instead, they like go to like English class, and English class is here's how you pass your SATs. Maybe unless you're going into the funnel that will take you to McDonald's. Here you go. Oh, you want to say? Um, by the way, enjoy watching television, which is created by a mysterious race of people in California that no one has any idea how they got out there. But we know they're all liberal cucktards that just uh, are ungrateful. And it's like, and the, and the, it's like no one at any point says to these kids in the hallway by their locker. By the way, psst, you could you could just move out there and start so you writing think, TV. You think that that there's a uh, there's a lack of awareness in the general population that they I could a, be a writer. There's a lack of of creative arts education. There's okay. a, there was a genuine gen, general twenty year pullback on in our educational institutions, particularly the public ones. Of on one side, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Because um, I don't fraternize with blue collar people, but. Um, the uh, work World? programs, the it's trades, sure, the yeah, trades, yeah. like yeah, kinda, yeah, yeah. the internships where you could be, if you were going to be a mechanic and you were good at it, high school wouldn't tell you you were a worthless piece of shit and you should go to rehab. They would tell you you could be a mechanic and right. like place you in a fucking mechanic job. Or, and, and, and then on the other hand, also, you, if you're, if you're going to go to college, but possibly maybe don't know exactly what you're supposed to do, that like, oh, there's a thing called poetry. There's a thing called fucking like thinking about shit. There's there's plays. There's there's a lot of art. money in poetry. Yes. Well, you don't have to fucking shrob me. I don't know what I'm talking no, about. No. That's not what shrobbing. Pointing That's out that I don't know what I talk about is it is a is a is a is a uh, is a lazy hobby, Robert Kirkman. But at least you found one. Should well, I get a Should I get a beard? True. Should I have a beard? Oh, I don't know. Should yeah. I get a beard? I've, Let's do I, it. You could try one. it. Should, should Go I, right I now. <laughs> Get the hose. <laughs> what if I just fucking like Play-Doh Fun Factory with a beard out of my face? I mean, I, I would be speechless. I would. It would be it would be wasted on a podcast. Yeah, definitely. True. Well, yeah. we do have true. the cameras. That's true. It would be captured. It make make a a great gif. GIF. I wonder when yours would go gray if you had one. <laughs> I'm getting pretty gray up here. You can't really see it because my hair's kind of dark, but it's getting it's getting gray and wiry. Really sad I, get, I, get, I get the odd gray, gray nose hair and the gray chest hair, and I got a, I had a, had a gray nipple hair over here that I thought was very distinguished. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, hmm. so I think you're distinguished. I don't know if your gray nipple hair. If anything, your gray nipple hair is a quitter. I, gray I, hair I, makes you distinguished. The gray hairs themselves. Let's not. Let's not praise I got them. The, I got the feeling that the other nipple hairs were looking at that gray nipple hair like, "Well, way to go! Like, nice try, Jack." Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Give That's, it. Th yeah. Thank you. It's good to be on the same page once in a while. <laughs> I love when you're drunk. Robert. <laughs> you, you haven't taken any Adderall. You just had vodka. Yeah. And, and I'm just you, swimming. I'm just treading life's you, water. You become what are you talking about? What are you you know, Go to the edge of the pool. Why are these floaty things around me? I'm trying to do like a robot. Thanksgiving Day uncle over there. You're just, just <laughs> freestyling. I'm, just, I'm two minutes from cleaning my ear with a car key and uh, unbuckling my belt and just falling asleep in front of the cranberry sauce. Car, car key work for that? That sounds... Huh. I uh, never tried it. Uh, that was a whole Gary Shandling bit about like Thanksgiving. It's like, yeah, geez, Dad, what are you trying to start your head? <laughs> but now you got those fobs. You can't even do it anymore. You got those square fobs. Yeah. That 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 joke's not universal. Anymore. I don't even have a car. I just stick a knife in there now. Oh boy. Oh man. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> just wow. keep drinking, please. Just like. like just. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, save us, Rob. I, I'm not joking. <laughs> save us. Fi pour yourself. Finish what you got in there. 
I, I, we well, to, my we, hands are tied, Ra- folks. Robert, Robert, right? We have, so, we are have you D&D all, coming up. I are, you drunk all, ass. Uh, are you all zombied out? I mean, do you recommend any kind of new zombie kind of stuff? Or are you just like, I'm so... I'm so sick of zombies. I can't no. see it. Or do you do you like check out what like is there some new kid like in Jamaica making some crazy <laughs> zombie stuff that you're just like you gotta check out this Jamaican kids doing some some really like <laughs> some revolutionary zombie stuff. You gotta check it out. I got some. some if I only got a thumb I, drive full. Of if only does. I had my finger on the pulse of all the new zombie stuff going yeah. on. <laughs> There's this kid no. in Jamaica. Um, His no, no, zombies no. are Irie. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. It's a twist. <laughs> I do still enjoy zombie uh, zombie stuff. I, I, I just recently uh, rewatched uh, Day of the Dead, which is a uh, oh, classic. So good. Great. Um, very excited about that. It'd That's been the first time I saw Wait, Greg, the, the, uh, the classic yes. or the remake? The, oh, the classic. I, I did. Did you? So I haven't I, seen the remake. I've been of obsessive Day the about the Day of the Dead. I was like, I would tell people like, that's that's the best. Like it's the Romero trilogy. It's so great that it builds from workaday schmucks in a black and white house going like, what the fuck's happening to the next tier of civilization, which is these slightly more privileged cops and and reporters like holding up in a shopping mall, and then that the culmination is this like. Oh my God! This isn't even life anymore. Yeah. It's scientists and soldiers. They're literally buried. But the yeah. but the only thing I noticed because I kept telling to Cody, I was like, "You gotta see like like first I gotta I gotta show you these first two movies." And then I I kept telling her like, "Yeah, the Day of the Dead." And it's like it's the best. It's like in a bunker and it's like crazy. And then I watched it again. And I felt a little embarrassed in the eyes of the person I was trying to indoctrinate because I was like, oh, I forgot there's no zombies in this one. Like, Day of the Dead? Yeah, there's not, yes. they, it's, they come plenty. in at the end. and plenty. All right, well, oh, it's got the good, it's good quite a I can't tell if you're high-roading me or medium-roading me. You're, you're helping no, no, me. No, no, you're trying no, to help, help me. Help me out. Help me out. No, but uh, you shouldn't have felt bad. My The most fascinating thing about Day of the Dead, if you guys don't know this, is that uh, that wasn't the movie that George Romero yeah. originally wanted to make. He, yeah. There's a different script that you can find online for the original Day of the Dead that was like this massive movie that had different people living on an island. And well, he eventually did that, right? The, he uh, he never did that movie. He did another movie okay. that took place on an island. Where they're in the but, sky uh, rise and the zombies learn to well, swim. Land of the Dead, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was some material, I think, from that that, that ended up in Land of the Dead. I think the Dead. the Dead Reckoning was in... Oh, was the, the I thought, car I thought I, Yeah, I thought that... that it's been a while since I've read it. Wasn't, wasn't, didn't Romero, like, say, like, there were certain zombies that they were actually being used as weapons, like, they were, had different colorings on them, or yeah. do you know yeah. what I'm Yeah, that, like, I certain zombies, I think they were trained to do different things. There right. was a lot more bubs in the original. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, I think, I think feel like Romero's obsession was with the idea that there was an uh, evolution happening. Yeah. Like, yeah. which I would say, like, eh. You know, like, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. It's not my favorite aspect. Of it's movies, it's, it's, it's like, sure. no, nah, I don't need that. It's sort of, sort of like, like the Wachowski siblings, like being into parts of the Matrix trilogy that you're like, oh, you fr- look, you've earned the right to be obsessive about yeah. this. But you're yeah, when you're, Colonel Sanders starts, <laughs> you know, him and hawing on stuff I can't understand. Or, well, can, I, can someone just wear sunglasses? Yeah, and punch I don't, somebody. I'm not smart and enough trench for this. And a, I like, think yeah. that I think that comes from the fact that like. Night of the Living Dead was originally like conceived by Russo and, and, and George Romero as a sequel to Omega Man. Like the idea was supposed to be let's let's do because we liked Last Man on Earth, the, the Vincent Price one. And if you watch Last Man on Earth at Night of the Living Dead, they feel like like one's a prequel. But like at the last minute well not at the last minute, they said, Well, we can't do that. Let's let's choose a different it can't be vampires. Let's make them zombies and they'll eat people instead of doing uh, 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 drinking blood, but in the Omega Man, like the la- the 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 vampires were slowly taking over the the world and becoming the dominant species. So it, that's kind of like what I think he was doing with the zombies. The zombies were taking over and they were becoming their own dominant species, and the humans were going to be. In a, a sense, it's also then a prequel to uh, Daybreakers with exactly. Stephen Dorff. All right. <laughs> Wasn't that with uh, the, it was about the girls that with the ski masks and the spring break that go down and it's rob places, you know. No, James that's, Franco. That's is in spring it. breakers, not day, day breakers. Is, is vampires have taken over and they have like a it's a it's a future vampire society where vampires are the dominant species and humans are. It's a very shrabby thing. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure you probably have seen it. 
Yeah. Um, Ski Patrol? It's not Ski Patrol. Ski Patrol. I've Patrol. named the movie three times now. Have you seen Daybreakers? Wedding Crashers. God damn it, all of you. Daybreakers, it's Ethan Hawke. Drink, 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 drink your drink. Warrior. Drink your drink, Dan. Vampires but, are people. You know, but, I've actually never seen humans. Daybreakers. But have you had... I don't want to get into your politics. I don't know, a bit, but... <laughs> Like, oh, here like, we go. Just, like, 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 when you watch Day of the Dead. I left my Making America Great Again hat at home, but go ahead. And they've got that, like, you know, that plotting synth score, and then she's got to go to her meeting with the soldiers. It's like, isn't that the dread that, it's like, that scene, and it's early in the movie, it's like, basically, it's the call to adventure, because there's nothing left anymore, and it's just the, let's have a meeting, and the soldiers are like, I want to know what the fuck is going on, and I've got the fucking guns, and what the fuck are you eggheads doing? And you know, and it, and it's like you're just in a lab coat. It's so you. It's like it's the liberal nightmare. Is is like I uh, like oh yeah okay the world's gotten so shitty that you control it, and you're a horrible person, <laughs> and I have no idea what you're gonna do. I only know what the zombies are going to do, and we've gotten pretty good at controlling them, and we'd like that comfort to continue. It's a very resonant for today moment, that that conversation, because it's like no good guys or bad guys. Because if you strain the dumb part of your brain, you can relate to the soldiers too. They're like, give us some results. We have a bunch of assault rifles. Should we not be like maybe going and finding a new bunker? (laughs) Uh, 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 when when she goes down, when they're like, we got to get out of here, and they're, they're about to leave, and they go down, and uh, and Nicotero's head is on the, on the and he's yeah. doing that. They find that, and she finds the tape recorder, and he goes, it's mind-boggling, Father. I've, you know, when Frankenstein is doing all the recording, and then she freaks out like, oh, no, oh, my God, no. I never really understood. What was your interpretation of that moment? <laughs> yeah, this Somebody, is, this is, this is the best use of Robert Kirkman of <laughs> any podcast. I hope. No, I, I, on a, I, I can't remember exactly what he says, but it. it it's mine, Nubbuck Father. It's mine. Stop, stop it, Father. I put it away, Father. Remember when? Yeah, she, yeah they're, no, no. They're yeah. kind of vaguely implying. I know the scene. I don't think I ever understood what. It, I didn't know if it was. Somebody like, said, "Oh, he's." Fucking, the, fucking zombies the zombies in the butt. Yeah, I always and thought I'm there was like, some kind of sexual what? thing. Really, there. really, really. But honestly, I think that is the cinematic Occam's razor because why else is that recording a plot point? Yeah. And I think that if you write backwards from the, um, if the answer is it's a revelation that the doctor is fucking the zombie, <laughs> in the 70s, the way you'd hear that as a plot device on a tape recorder would be a bunch of weird improv about like daddies and as opposed to, cause it wouldn't be like, yeah, if your zombie ass feels so good on my normal living dick. It's so tight. Cause it's fucking dead and cold. It would be like, it would be, it would have to be veiled. All right. Bye Robert Kirkman. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if that was, the it would case- have to be veiled like, Oh, he's perverted <laughs> and perverts talk about their talk about daddy, yeah. you know, while they're doing yeah. nasty stuff. But what's the alternative explanation is just that he's, He's or crazy, just that, or just that he's. he's yeah, nuts. I think, that, I think that, her thing is she's like, oh god, we've he's, been. I've been defending him to the soldiers yeah. this whole time, and he's batshit insane. He's out of his mind. Yeah. But I would say if that's true, double beat. Like, yeah, I'm gonna say knew, it's because he's been fucking. She the knew sure, that yeah. he was off. Yeah. You know, he was. She was impatient with him too. She just was like, she's she's like, doctor, what are we gonna do? The fucking soldiers are getting worse than the zombies, and and he's like, I just need more data. Be That's like civilized. So wait, civilized. Well, yeah. If, if if there's a change in story direction, as she's implying with her shocked uh, reaction, it maybe maybe it's because I'm limited. But it almost seems like it could only mean that she's finding out he was fornicating with the chained up zombie. I feel like there must be another option, but yeah, I think you I, might be right. I also want to say, I hope that's, <laughs> I wish that wasn't true because I find that again, as with the like whole bub evolution, I find that stuff to be totally like not at all what's appealing about zombie mythology. Like, I, I, I just, I, you know, Shrab and I have talked about this endlessly, but like, it's just like the 70s had it nailed at a certain point because it was like, they're just a sea of death. They're stupid. They're slow. Yeah. Not that I mind the new run, post-9-11 running zombies that shriek like bobcats and leap from rafters. I, it, it, it obviously works for us, too. 
and it has its own resonance. I think it's an either or situation. I mean, sometimes I like the movies where they're running, and I like it in that movie. But I, I mean, I prefer the slower ones. But it's not like oh, these movies suck. But because the idea the that the the, the the living are the wildcats. The living yeah. are the problem because they're living. The living are are unpredictable. The living are in and of themselves capable of ruining everything by pushing one button either yeah. in a conversation or on a switchboard. Whereas these fucking things have perfect order. They have the American dream slash the Russian dream slash like the immortality. Like and like, oh, my God, they're going to get us. But none of them are going to high five each other or, you know, and it's like that's why that bub aspect of Romero's dream always that distracted me, too, because I was like, I don't. I know I'm supposed to like jump up in the theater and go, one of them used a gun or learned to use a doorknob. Like, like not at all to me the point, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, uh, uh, I mean, that's one of the aspects that, you know, entertained me and, you know, engaged me to the point that I actually did The Walking Dead. I love that zombies, by and large, are a manageable threat. You know, right. if you. And an explorable one. I mean, you've explored sure. them in so many ways that, that because you got to just like. <laughs> Right and right, you you got to think over and over People again. People will about get it. sick of it eventually, but but uh, <laughs> it's but, only yeah, a matter I mean, of time now. It's you know it's it's fascinating to think about this you know unrelenting like sea of danger that's out there, and you know if you keep your wits about you and you plan well, you can do fine. But if yeah, I'm going to retire. Up, like, I'm going to are... retire. I'm going to have that death where that doesn't end in that one shot where you go ah, <laughs> and your intestines are dragged apart like a taffy bar. I'm going to be the one human being left that doesn't I do I do, I do I like my other favorite thing since I'm this drunk is the beginning of Dawn of the Dead the 70s one where it's just like it's no, such a freaky building? No, not the apartment building that stuff's creepy fun. The TV station. It's the TV station that she's she's waking up. What's her name? Polly. I it's just like it's that she's the eyes in and it's just I love that the black and white one, they worshipped the television because the, if the television could just tell us what was going on and where we should go and then they worship their one car and it's like this perhaps unintentional but spot on resonant cultural thing of like it's black and white. It's it has its roots in old school classic horror films, but it's fucking so raw and powerful because it's just fear and it's just like. There's a black guy in the house. It's almost a bigger problem than there's dead people outside eating brains. And the young people understand that that's counterproductive. And the, the and the guy with the control of the hammer and nails doesn't. And and that if we could just get this TV working, oh the TV's like oh the TV got we got to get it working. And that the idea that you fade in on the sequel at the TV station. And it's full color now, and it's like it's seventies, and everyone's got bell bottoms and smokes weed. But like you're pretending that the narrative just—they work in television, that, where you're learning that this is the, the apocalypse will not be manageable by anybody. All right, sorry. I'm sorry to your children. I'm sorry to our listeners. <laughs> have you seen Train to Busan? No, I have not. Oh, that was really awesome. That was really good. It's a uh, it's a uh, Korean, I believe, zombie movie. It's it's really great. I recommend oh, that okay. one. They keep making good zombie movies. I I'll be the first person that I can easily just go like too many zombie movies. Zombies are dead. No pun intended. Sure. But like it's a, it, but I'll wa I, I keep watching them and then it doesn't. It's almost like it's like road movies. You know, it doesn't matter that there's a thousand of them. It's just, like 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 there's there'll just be some Swedish do, yeah. zombie movie. They go like, in waves, though. I mean, there was like we didn't see zombie movies for a really long time, and then they came back, and then it's like vampires. You know, it's like like undead stuff. It goes like, I mean, why do you think that it is that? Like, what is it about society that makes us fascinated with, like, the undead and living dead like that for, like, a, an amount of time, and then we move on to something else? I don't know. I mean, I think it's, uh, I don't know. You, you, like, you got, like, one that's, like, super popular, you like, a 28 Days Later. Yeah. And then that begets, like, a Land of the Dead and a Dawn of the Dead remake and a bunch of different stuff. And then it becomes so popular that, that they start making crappy ones. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, eh, let's let this rest for a couple months. Yeah. And it's then... Then, then they come back. I feel like that's the cycle. I don't think yeah. there's any kind of like societal like oh people hey. are like feel guilty about all the horrible things that we're doing over seas and uh, to get iPhones and the, these are the dead people coming to get us. 
there's no living nightmare. I don't think. Yeah, it, I don't think most people are aware kind of, of all the horrible I, things I, we yeah. do to get iPhones. Too. I, 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 I don't go to like like a lot of action movies or like. Um, like the hell you say? Superhero movies or zombie movies, or whatever. Black Panther is really burning up the charts. Uh, top six. Top six. Oh okay, boy, my button didn't work too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It, it is a weird genre that, that that that's become a giant thing. Like there's there's this, this inundation of like like of zombie stuff. Like that's that, that is weird that that's, there's so much of it. Well, it kind of is verging on into the ninth season of Walking Dead and the nine hundredth indie movie about like, well, my relationship's not going that well because there's a zombie attack. Like it's it, it as many shitty ones as there are. Sure. It's kind of verging on the hip hop thing where it's like you wanted to say, like, if you were waiting for it to be over, that rap was a fad. And then it's like at a certain point, you just went, this is a genre. This is not a thing. This is not something. And it's like, I, I think it's just that we don't have a, a healthy. Uh, it, our, our technology means conquering death in, in, a, in, a, in the get it out of your living room way. And so it's like, Although vampires will always have their um, attraction, they'll be rooted in, as has been said since the silent movie days, that it's there's a sexuality there. It's about them being humans that uh, seduce and attract and manipulate and things. And then there's these there's werewolves, but we don't werewolves were popular for like a the tiniest stint and it's like that's like a Jekyll and Hyde thing where it's like oh I I'm fascinated with the idea that we can all at the drop of a hat turn into a fucking horrible Hulk monster that it just wants to eat your face it's like it, it's not a it doesn't take off the way saying everyone's dead everyone that touches you will make you dead then you'll be dead, but you'll never be dead because you can't be dead. You'll just want to make other things dead. You're you're a consumer in an, in a sea of consumption, and you'll just want to consume. And for all you know, aren't even if you're not already one of them, don't you wish you were? Aren't they winning? Isn't it just? It's just. It's been the nonstop. Like it's like waves of it come and go, but it's like mounting in its appeal as a genre it's almost yeah. like 30 years from now there'll just be zombie channels zombie zombie will just be a oh, i gotta get on that uh, <laughs> but uh, no i mean i think one of the things that does give zombies a, an edge over werewolves and vampires and things like that is that you know those stories are always about a person who's become a vampire a person who's become a werewolf but you don't do stories about the zombies Every zombie story is about the people in the story, and the zombies are just window dressing. Yeah. So the genre, I think, lives on because you can be like, well, there's some soldiers in Iraq, and they're doing this, and then zombies show yep, up. Yeah, and, yeah. oh, there's some people at a baseball game in New York, and zombies so, show up. Uh, like, Na Nazis, Nazis looking for buried Jewish gold during yeah. World War II, and, and then, then the Nazis come up. out of the cup. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's aliens it's, invade, and then zombies <laughs> show up. But <laughs> zombies are also, or at least like the stories that you tell with zombies, are also kind of involved in the stories we have in general anyway right it's like there's still you're trying to find food shelter safety it's like it's it's like all the the fears we have about real life apply more with zombies like someone randomly could just kill you like if you go outside it yeah. is dangerous you actually do have to go find food to survive otherwise your kids will end up dead like it's it's a very extreme version of like all the these Grubhub fears. app is not working <laughs> especially oh, no. all this capitalist stuff oh, though right yeah. like the idea it's like we there is no more infrastructure like there are no yeah. more gas stations or refineries that like like that i think are these fears that come naturally out of like living living under the Forming shadow loose of corporations alliances with a with a with a group of people just for survival could be the thing that kills you that was the thing about dawn of the dead that was get really scary is that like how quickly the system fails you know when yeah. this this weird thing that no one can explain or take care of happens and everybody turns against each other, and you right. don't trust anybody. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like the cops yeah. are shooting we each other because zombies they're going crazy. Can't. It's a zombies, are, anyway. zombies don't have garlic. They don't have uh, wooden stakes that you have to put through their heart. I, it, it, like they're thwarted by locking the door, which is our kryptonite because it means we have to be with each other. 
<laughs> it's like fucking great. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, like it's the, uh, they really, it's uh, the, the, uh, Sartre, especially with Dawn of the or Day of the Dead. It's like, like the the real threat is is the people inside that are like ready to shoot you because you're not pulling your weight or or they just want to or they're just like or, or the people that lose their minds and open the door for all the others on. Yeah, yeah. Do you think an argument could be made the next time you do a panel, maybe you could mention this? Sure. You were about to get sick and tired of zombies. You, and and we, we really brought you back. We kind of we kind of made another 3 seasons of Walking Dead happen. Oh, Harmontown so. saved The Walking I Dead. I think so. I was definitely on the edge, but now you guys have got the wheels turning. This was sort of an it's the wo- yeah. it's a wonderful one. We're we're it's, good it's, till it's season 16 death. now. Yeah. So that's good. You're welcome to the people listening that also uh, were worried yeah, that no, this Robert is really Kirkman helpful. had run dry. And then I'm probably going to need to come do this show again in about four or five <laughs> years. So <laughs> that's fine. You know. I'm sure it'll be here. I'm, yeah. As you know, I am a fountain of enthusiasm about my own work. <laughs> yeah. uh, what time is it? We have, uh, we have about ten minutes to go. Until we've talked through an entire two-hour show. Yeah, yeah it's 9.50. So really, we're kind of we went too long. No, we're, we went too we're, long. We're ten minutes shy. Yeah, it feels like we've only just gotten started. We're supposed to play D and D at the end. No, we're not going to get show. any D and D. All right. Well, it. I'm sure Spencer's probably. Can, pretty can I? Can I do? Yeah, can I? Love, can I do a little segment it. right now? Um, since yes. I I asked uh, last week. I think uh, Shrab went off on Lolly. Uh, My Shrab dog put Lolly on blast. Lolly, oh, is, and you. Lolly is Rob's dog. My okay. dog. That I love what, very what, what was what's that? What was that made Lolly so crazy? Uh, like I think it was like have you like the dog uh, the wind up dog or something like that yeah. a toy dog do you ever you ever take like a like a a toy dog that's like walks around and barks and you put it next to your dog and and they experience the uncanny valley and just like a what the what the fuck man what is the, turn, and so Rob off, Rob Rob did a re- big like yeah. kind of like awesome beautiful kind of Patty Chayefsky monologue on this and. Uh, I asked some of our listeners, would they please put this to music? And I think we have, there are, there are like multiple great ones, but we have, we have one of them tonight. Uh, Zach, you want to lay that on? We're not talking about fruit infused waters. We're not talking about that. Jeez, what is, what is this? What is this thing? What is this? What is this thing? I'm 40, and you should be so grateful, so, so, so grateful of what I gave to you, because I could cut the head off and replace it with a pop singer, and and I'm going to, and I did, and then they sucked too, but it's like, like, what are you, like, 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 I, 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 who cares? Just let me make a show. Just let me make it. What are you waiting for? A good idea for a show? In your mind? You're a fucking idiot! You looking at me? Jeez! What is... What is this? What is this thing? <laughs> what is this? You don't know what to do, Ten, You gotta go potato party. You suck! Yeah. You don't make TV! No. Why are you in charge? This is insane! <laughs> Just give me TV money! Give me TV money! I'll make a good TV show! I tend to! I'm a storyteller. Take your fucking silver platter. Half of it's in my ass. What's what's the uh, what's the meeting with the goddess in the Mrs. Potato Head movie? He finds out he can be Mrs. Potato Head. <laughs> what, is, what is this? What is this thing? What is this? Yeah. 
It's halfway done. I know exactly what Mr. Potato Head would do. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. So, so move over Black Panther, and now there's something else burning <laughs> yeah. up the charts. Uh, I think that was by Russ Hillier. If I'm, if I'm getting that right, H I L L I E R. Well done, Russ. Uh, they that added was, that, five years to my life. That was that really amazing. Really, um, I'm 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 weeping with joy right where now. Where can I where can I get that? I want to listen to that. Uh, uh, Russ Hillier's SoundCloud, well, probably right. Well, well, we'll have to put that up on the um, on the Harmontown website or in the uh, in the tweets about. You're I did very, just think of one very thing. Very polite and patient, just hanging out and listening to this. Don't you don't have. I any, enjoyed don't that. Don't insult about? me. But don't do what you're doing. You know what you're doing, and don't do it. Excuse me, what? Yeah, what the fuck, man? Don't uh, don't yeah. apologize me, to my me. guest what? for what? How he was a guest? Because I just thought of an amazing thing. L- l- get a load of this. Oh yeah. Hey, Robert Kirkman. Uh, nine hundred episodes of The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Nine seasons. Uh, there are hundred a season. That's good. A lot, lot of people walking around, going to different places, like that prison I remembered. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Spencer. Dungeon master, always dealing with a bunch of uh, dumb survivors, like walking around. This is your chance. Is there anything you want to ask him about? Uh, how do you, how do you wor- world craft? I thought it was a great. I think it's a great <laughs> connection. I, this guy's got to come up with dungeons of his own. I, I, I'm, I'm, I really like no Adderall, lots of vodka, Dan. <laughs> it's making me pretty happy. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> I kind of turned into Bill Cosby, like like minus the hopefully. The, I'm just like it's <laughs> doing it how I was like, what do I do? Yeah, except you're drugging yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's responsible. Do you have, you have any que- You you want to validate my? As a dungeon fine master, if you have no questions. I gotta I gotta ask. How do you world craft? All right, all right, all right, okay, all right. I just thought, you know. I do a lot of jogging. <laughs> I tried that. Uh, I'm all Sometimes when up I'm now. not getting ideas, I'll stand on my head. The truth is Whoa. that the two I of gotta you. got to funnel the ideas down into the brain, you know. Where the blood is. Yeah. The you ever watch this tools? show called Sherlock? <laughs> you ever see this show? It's like a modern, like, Sherlock. You ever see that? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's like a about? Lady Watson, right? A Lady Watson? Like a Lady Watson. Oh, is that the other Sherlock? That's elementary. There's too many Sherlock shows. Yeah, okay, there are. Talk about Sherlock, not Lady Watson. Oh, that's got the Hobbit Watson. Hobbit Watson. Okay. Sherlock. Didn't they do like a Sherlock where it was like set not in modern times, but Sherlock times? I thought I saw him like, it was like a, one of them st- stunt episodes or something like that. It was all, st- it happened in his head, but it did happen, right? Those are always great. In his head. Yeah. I love it when things happen you in people's You should do heads. that on Walking Dead. Do a Sherlock episode. I did want to say I was watching a horror movie today. Uh, uh, I love it when people have nightmares in horror movies and that that's part of the rules of the horror movie because uh, I'm watching a movie because I love caring about dumb, boring people's dreams. <laughs> That's why you, like you, watch, you, watch, you watch these horror movies, like horror movies where people like go to sleep in a cabin and then yeah, like, we, need, we need dreams. a scare. We need an like, extra scare. I don't care scare. what your dreams it's, are. Oh God! Yeah. What movie oh, were the you The monster watching? eats your dreams. Go fuck. What, what movie? Pointless. What movie were you watching? Dan? I'm not gonna shit it. Why not? Because put it on blast. Because those. Blast. Because whatever kid made the shitty Netflix horror movie I just watched. Yep, Netflix. There's a clue. Hey, we're, we're almost. It was called the Ritual. Zach, put a beat on for oh. for, for for Boozy Dan oh, I was to, watch to, to that. bring the show. They're, oh, Jesus Christ. That's a bit loud. They're probably the next Duffer Brothers, and I don't want to fuck so the, shit on them. Dan, so, you're, so you're saying the ritual? I want to fuck shit on the Duffer no, Brothers. Actually, well, the you should, that you, did you'll, it, you'll like it. By you'll like bus? it. What are you? What are you saying? It's I worth, heard it it's was worth good. Ninety minutes. Give us a beat. Oh, okay. it's, a, it's a cool monster. Dan, it's Dan, a really cool. I monster. Heard it's it almost ten o'clock. Put the show on blast. We're gonna. This show on blast. Put the whole show on blast. All right, yeah. Give us that beat, Zach. Zach McKeever, you got a beat for us? We'll just sit here. How about when he does that? We'll just sit here and say nothing. Was there any? We'll do that. How about when Dan does that? You, we'll just sit here and do nothing. You, you can rap too. You can How about rap. that? Would that yeah. help? Would that help? Oblivion. Everybody song. else sat here. Order and it did through nothing. Diamond Distributors. <laughs> Bring it to your local shelves. Keep this kid off the street. Please. Oh, shh. 
shit oh. don't go your way all the time when you're Robert Kirkman trying to make time all the time. But this show needs to go on blast, motherfucker. This show's ass needs to get blasted. My name <laughs> is Mr. Rap. I'm <laughs> here so to drunk. put you on a blast. Thank you for coming to Harmontown, everybody, oh, or watching Harmontown. <laughs> no, Dad, Dad, keep, keep blasting. Oh, okay. See, I'm gonna I thought that was a vote of no I'm confidence out, in I'm my out. blast it, pudding. It I'm going gonna, gonna to outro, but you Definitely blast it is. while I say thank you to everybody. <laughs> Drug Dan, keep blasting. Some people need Let's to hear it go for our on guests. blast. Robert Kirkman from The Walking Dead, everybody. Look out for his blast. comic book, Oblivion Song. Gonna put him on You blast. get the first one coming That's soon, but he's already background. got 12 on the bank. <laughs> go real fast. <laughs> Quip toothbrushes don't go on blast. Let's thank Zach, Sarah, Noah, and Chris. A suction cup on your Steve mirror. Levy, Kevin Church, or Rob okay, Schraub, as always. Bag. Underutilized, yeah. but always appreciated. Uh, don't don't give them that. Thank you, thank you. Only Beach Jeff, body. the game master who we played no games with tonight, Spencer Crittenden, and the Robert voice of thank reason you. in our thank you for reasonless world. Never I've been your controller, blast. Jeff Davis. Nobody here is on blast, but the show is on blast. And your mayor, I, I gotta put my own. Who can neither ass see nor hear us right now? Yo, so you're fat and forty-five. Yo. If you dare. Put it together for your mayor, Dan Harmon. Oh, yo. I don't do it for that. Wow. In fact, if you clap, you'll get punished for that. The self-appointed Bill Cosby of rap. Yo, I don't need <laughs> any connection from you. Does, does Black Panther have like a catchphrase before he panthers somebody? He says it's time for justice. It's ha time for justice. Happy cliffhanger! He really says that. that. He says it's time sense. for justice. Thank you all. He says fast. It's Take time chances. for justice. Are, are Panthers famous for keeping track of time? No, they're famous for justice dispensation. Like all heroes? Yeah, Panthers. Panthers aren't heroes. Well, they're Panthers. No, but all heroes want justice. So why does he say it's time for justice? That's what I, I would expect Cuckoo Man to because say. Because he's Black Panther. He should be All Black Panthers Cuckoo. are heroes, but not all heroes are Panthers. Thank you. you no, it's Thank not you. complicated. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Well. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.